Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the opening day of the Intel Extreme Masters Sydney. And of course, gentlemen, we're about ready to jump into our first match of the day. Not going to wait too long for that one, of course. So without further ado, let's welcome our very first team in this group stage from a, uh, from Denmark, should I say. It's got to be North. Disappointing exit for them, of course, from Kiev in the, in the quarterfinals here. But obviously online, they've been playing incredibly well. Very good record at the top of the ESL Pro League. They've been destroying in the Pro League recently, which is uh, obviously a bit of a different environment and a long way from home. But, uh, you know, the, the power duo of uh, Magics and, and, and Config, we haven't seen them both lighting up the scoreboard in a while, but these guys have still been getting it done off the back of some fantastically consistent performances from Cajun, who's been beasting. He's been uh, getting the job done, done and uh, AZ seems to be finding his, finding his feet in the team a bit more so now, and MSL and Rugger getting it done from uh, the in-game leading and coaching perspectives. Of course, you know, it's, you have to think back too far to think to that performance from Majiska E-League against Virtus Pro. Yeah. In that semi-final, we went 37 kills in that last map, and unfortunately when he went out, the rest of his team failed to bring anyone back into his position as well. Is that a concern for North here? Is it a concern that if you know, they're only going to have maybe one player that switches on, the rest won't be able to bring up the rear or at least try and support them? I think that the biggest issue for these guys is being consistent in the way that they can approach the game. And because two of their biggest stars are aggressive, that's one of the hardest things to be consistent at, right? So for them, uh, maybe we're going to see a different face out of them in the way that they approach the game, maybe a bit more con conservative or a bit more reserved and then switching into that aggression later. Um, but I don't think you know they're going to have too many worries in, in you know, the early stages of, of this format. And of course, their opponents fresh off the back of a decent performance at the Summit over in America. It is going to be Optic Gaming Yanko, a team a little bit changed from last time we saw them, no doubt about it. Yeah, their, their biggest loss, uh, obviously, is losing Stanislaw to Liquid, their in-game leader. And you can see how much they were struggling after that. All of the players in the lineup tried to in-game lead. None, none of them was willing to pick it up permanently. They brought in Jason R for trial. He's also the in-game leader of the team. So when you get a player on trial, give him the in-game leader role, someone who's never played at, at that high of a level, That's you huge. are in, in, in a bit of a pickle there. So. At the summit, they, they started off really bad, but they kind of improved through the tournament. Now, at, here in Sydney, they're playing with their coach, Hayes, uh, instead of Jason R, their in-game leader, which all things considered isn't that bad. You know, you have the coach who knows the strats. Hayes is also a very experienced player. He's a smart guy. I, I feel like if you're looking for a stand-in, that team has enough firepower with, with the rest of the guys that you kind of want someone to be able to just keep up. And of course, you're giving the coach a little bit more input than when he's actually in comps for the entire of the game. So interesting to see what kind of optic we actually get this time around. But let's hear a little bit more from North. We have Miles Ross on the sideline. Oh, no, it's not ready in a few moments. We'll talk oh, to Miles. Okay. I do want to hear what Raga has to say as well. It's been a while since I've chatted to him, but we can just feel a little bit longer, boys. Talk do you, a little do bit you more think about that Raga has like an advantage as a coach because he used to be a school teacher? I'm no. not sure. Because no when I asked no him, the, no you know what, though? I, I asked no, him that question. Actually, if, he, if he actually went to NA, then he would have a big advantage because they're all just a bunch of kids out there. <laughs> Damn. Won't quite break out the belt, but it'll get something similar, I think. Yeah, well, I spoke to him in Katowice. I asked him about that, actually, as well. He, he seems pretty blasé about it. He doesn't seem to think it translates over to too much at all, actually, from being a school teacher. Surely you'd have to it's learn. It's a different relationship, Chad. I guess, yeah. I guess, and it's Counter-Strike, so, you know, not as uh, black and white as maths. I don't guess you have... I guess you don't have that many bad students in Denmark because I, I guess CS players are equivalent to that with their <laughs> personality and mentality. Just lazy. Perhaps. I yes. feel I've set us up with a really bad point here. <laughs> let's uh, let's get into a good point. <laughs> go down the go, go. I mean, let's talk about who we're looking out for in this game. back. Who it, are we looking out for? Well, I think it, Mixwell has to step out, right? Because the way that, that everything's kind of gone for Optic is he's been the star that's got, gotten them through recent times and, and gotten them the wins that they've needed um, by having some consistent and, and very good performances. The, the problem with this team, and I mentioned it just a little bit earlier, was the fact that they play off intuition. So you can get punished for that because if a team knows that you, you're relying on a player to go big and get a 3K to win that round, um, you can play a little bit more reserves or you know you're not going to re-peak that guy because when they're on fire, they're, they're on fire, right? It's very difficult to stop them. Um, and, and the way that they approach the game, I think they lost confidence in themselves by losing that their in-game leader. They're still in that rebuilding phase, getting back to a point of, hey, who is going to be our permanent fifth? How are we going to approach the game? And there was rumors of these guys, you know, leaving the organization and going to another team. So there's a lot of things mentally that these guys have to overcome. And uh, it's going to be probably their biggest battle. And you're in a team, of course, in, in Renegades. In, during the end of your time, there was a big dispute about who was making the calls and where the instructions were coming from there as well. How hard is it when your team loses confidence in their call? It's not fun. It's not fun at all. <laughs> Get the knife in there, boys. Yeah, it really, it really hurts, mate. You know, you have, uh, you look in the mirror, you question yourself, you think, what am I going to do every day? And uh, then you retire and you do this. Just come out, hang it's with much us. more fun. Yeah, a bit more <laughs> chilled out. I'd like yeah, to think. a little, a little bit more. Uh, uh, I guess easier would be the word I'm looking for. Right. Uh, you know, it's easier than being an analyst. 
being a caster. <laughs> I've heard that. Please, as well. <laughs> don't, yeah. please right, look, don't go. There's there. only so many rabbit holes we can go down today. Before exactly. I will save that stuff later on. Anyway, exactly. let's head over to Miles Ross with Rugger for a quick interview about how North are feeling shaping up into this game. Thanks, Mitch. I'm here in the cage of North, and I'm here with Rugger. Hi, hey, Rugger. How's it going, mate? How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling good. So, yeah. Yeah, all good. So, I mean, there's been a couple of questions about your team's consistency so far. You know, you haven't been placing in the top end of, uh, of the board for quite a while. I mean, what are you guys doing to address that sort of thing now? Uh, we know that our RCT side has been our weaknesses, so we have worked on it uh, in the last two months, and hopefully it will show progress as in practice and ESL Pro League in the online matches. So that's what, uh, why we're here. What, what we're going to do here, we're trying to improve our city sides, and if we do, we know we can beat anyone. Anyone indeed. Now, we and uh, sorry for the delay, boys. We were just taking care of the vetoes over there. Anyone you're really looking out for this competition, or is it sort of is it strictly business? You're coming up each game one after the other, or is there anyone you really want to give it to? Uh, we always take one one game at a time, and we know that if we win the first one, we have a good chance winning the second one, and so on. So, also, even though we should lose the first one, we have a good map pool. We know how to play against any opponent. So, I think we are set to do like play wh whatever team that comes up. But of course, we will also always like to beat the best in the world. At the moment, that's Australis, and also we have like an uh, ongoing feud with SK that we haven't beat them for quite some time. So that would be fun to beat them if we get the opportunity. Indeed. Now, you said a moment ago you've been in Australia now. You came here on Monday. You've had one day off. Have you guys been up to much? Have you had any fun here? Has it been strictly business? I think we like used yesterday to try and get avoid the jet lag thing. So we went swimming in the Olympic uh, swimming stadium. So that's what we've been doing and just chilling, trying to like get the focus on for today. Strictly business day? You not any trips to the beach or are you going to save that for when you're all finished? I think we might do it on Friday when we have the day off, but yeah, we'd have to see about the scheduling, yeah. No, that's a, that's a great idea, but I can assure you, so with that fair complexion, <laughs> you should put on some sunscreen. Uh, Guys, thanks very much. That's all from me down here with North. Thanks very much to Rugger. Again, good luck, good luck to the boys, and I'm sure they're going to come by in a minute, so we'll cut this one short. Guys, back to you. Love me a bit of an arm rub there as well, Miles. Very personal little interviewing style. I mean, speaking about sunscreen, by the way, it's a shame we're not going to get to see Henry for the next couple of days because we're going to miss his perfect red cooked period. He did have yeah. SPS 50 on as well, so he wasn't. I didn't even know he wasn't having the any other. The factor wasn't the problem. The problem was that Henry put the sunscreen after. Yeah. He <laughs> after he was in the water, like yeah. for an hour, so he wasn't having any of it. He finally realised when he started to feel the tingle. But interesting point that a Casper brings up in the interview. He wants to work on North CT side a little bit more. He's sort of feeling that's not been up to scratch. Yeah. What's your guys? take on that I, I think because they're aggressive right we've already outlined that that when you're aggressive on the ct side you can get punished a lot by getting picked off by t's defaults so the hardest thing to do is especially with explosive players you like to play on the full uh, like at a 4v5 situation with the cts you like planned aggression sure. but when you're not able to hold when you have to dial it back you know that they're doing a super passive default you have to play reserved in the sides you have to hold on to your utility a little bit longer that's very difficult to do if your players aren't used to it and a lot of these guys are still relatively new to, to this level like config and magic haven't been playing at this high-end level of counter-strike they're not veterans of the scene by any means they're just amazing players who have skyrocketed up so you know to, to get everybody to be passive is, is a very difficult thing and I'd say that's what he meant by by working on their CT sides right well the vetoes are in gentlemen so we can start to see now what our first Lovely. match is, is going to look like we're going to get that down the bottom of the screen in just a moment now this is the format here it's it's um, a b b a a b a or yep. something like that I might have put on one extra at the end there yeah the way you can the, see there there was one little extra to decide uh, who goes first it's the coin toss uh, I believe. Chess clocks and coin tosses. Yeah. Exactly. All right, well, uh, train band out here first by North. I mean, we see anything surprising here, gentlemen, anything that's maybe even noteworthy given this matchup? The only thing that I was interested in was, is North more confident in their Inferno or their Mirage? Because train is their go-to veto. Cash is something that they have started playing. They had some good results on the map, but sure. you don't really want to play it against Optic. North has a deeper map full, so they have that, uh, you know, benefit of, of choosing the map that's going to be played while well. On the other hand, Optic kind of needs to veto some maps, like we see here, uh, New can overpass, and it's kind of interesting they veto Cobble. It's one of the maps uh, that they uh, tend to play a lot as well, but maybe just felt that North being such a strong team on Cobble, they, they don't want any of it. And uh, we end up in Inferno, which is interesting. That's the map where Optic beat them on in, in Vegas. You know, yeah, that's the one. That'll give Optic some confidence in the sense that they know they've already beaten them on the map, but that was like one of the first times that this new Inferno... It was Inferno like in February, had, wasn't it? Yeah, it had ever been played, right? So it was more of a, like a shock and awe factor to that victory, I would say, because North look really good on Inferno nowadays. They have a really good banana presence. Um, the CT side with Magix and MSL at B, they have a good uh, little combo over there. The way that they retake banana is cool. So, uh, And then you've got like the Rock in, in Cajun. He plays the pit and the balcony side. So it's, it's a very difficult defense. Um, and, and I think North are, are known for having a very good T side at the moment as well. So it's, it's quite scary for, for Optic. 
And Inferno, I mean, what, what else are we looking out for then from Optic that we know of them as well? You saw them at the summit. You were there. I don't know how much we saw from them. They bowed out against Gambit Gaming in the semis. But what's your take on seeing them this match come up for them? Uh, in, at the summit, they've improved throughout the tournament. Here, obviously, they have a, a one different player. But for them, it's going to be very important to deal with... Uh, North City side, as Chad mentioned, they do a very good job of retaking Banana. They understand the importance of Banana control. For so for a team, for a team that's probably a little bit disorganized at the moment, a little bit disjointed, like Optic is, uh, they need to find a way to to battle that. Maybe it's just grouping up earlier on, trying to b brute force their way in, not playing so much out of defaults and not getting picked off. Uh, but yeah, they they need to hit the ground running basically on that T side. Otherwise, they might just get shut down completely by North. We kind of talk about this team being a team that, you know, maybe is not so good north, that is, playing a slower default on maps like this. But we've seen so many teams, if they turtle quite heavily on the CT side of, of Inferno, could be out-rotated or just forced to save a lot of rounds. Yeah, I, I think once north take a bomb site, you know, it's pretty hard to get it off them um, because they're very effective players in, in the afterplant situations. But my biggest concern for Optic is exactly what Yanko said. Unless they can get pistol on the T side and, and win that first gun round, they're going to have a rough time getting into the game because when you have a team that is um, still kind of mixed and finding their feet... Inferno is a map where you need structure even just to take a little bit of territory. Like taking mid wall is a huge battle and you still haven't even gotten close to the bomb side at that point, right? So they're going to either need to, to get stay on top of the economy and keep it a bit more fast paced with the brute force, which means that it's not so much up to strategy and, and hoping that you're outplaying the positioning of North. You're just taking angels and taking fights and forcing them to potentially be out of position, which would probably be the best way for them to address this matchup. We think this is also a map that some teams just opt not to play in opera as well. I mean, where do we see players like Cajun and Mixwell fit, fitting in here? We've seen some teams really persist with having an AWPer and actually having them have big impact. Alu, great example for FaZe, especially on his CT side. What do we expect to see from these guys, or have we seen it? Can give you any insight? I think it's the most difficult map to AWP on the T side alongside Nuke. Yeah. So I don't want to see these players or teams forcing it, per se. I think five rifles can, can work pretty well because the map is execute heavy to an extent, right? You can go for a lot of executes towards B with the Molotovs. You can do the same thing towards A. It's just the, the part of taking map control is probably the most difficult on the T side, and an op is not going to help you that much. Very situational when if you know where the CT opera is going to be and you can guarantee perhaps an early pick and an early 5v4, then it's okay. On the CT side, it's much more viable and much more potent because I think a single opera is preferable to the double op setup. Then you can move around the map, go maybe towards banana a couple of rounds, go mid, be aggressive towards apps, and that way you always keep your opponents guessing and uh, you're not really as predictable. Yeah, with, with the AWP on that CT side, if you can find yourself an opening kill, you can ruin executes, basically. So um, if you're going to go hyper-aggressive with it in apartments like JW style, you might find yourself getting punished. But if you move it around like Yanko was saying, you can usually find a lot of success with it. The fact that Optic are a team who can drop it to one of three players to do that, it means it's going to be even more unpre uh, unpredictable if they choose to, to go down that route. So we, we kind of like to look at this when we look at a, maybe a matchup, which, as you said, this one was a little bit closer then as well. For Optic then... On paper. On paper, right. <laughs> so for Optic then that are looking a little bit, you know, a little bit weaker at the moment, or at least weakened then, it's still about a keys to victory. I love this phrase. Where are they? Where are they? To, yeah, Do you we love need it. to get I the copyright like, for face. this or winning conditions? Keys to victory, trademark. Yeah. What are we looking for here from Optic then? Like, what's their flow chart at least to start on this game? Against the known quantity, I guess, in North, we know a little bit more about. Staying on top of the economy is the biggest one, I would say. Obviously, the pistols, if you want to get super cliche, but I think just making sure you keep punishing that economy, even if you, you know, it, it sometimes seems that teams do it on purpose when they're on top of another, uh, when they're on top of their opponent, right? You know, you win four or five rounds in a row, and then you kind of let them win one. When I say let them win one, they let, they win, then you instantly win it back and reset the, the money. So if you can basically run that through your T side, that's a great way to have a huge, uh, huge lead. Um, it, it's weird with Inferno at the moment. I don't think we've found the balance. If it's a CT or T side of map, it seems pretty even. You, like North of a team who I've seen put up 11 rounds on their T side just by doing exactly that, staying on top of the economy. But Optics win conditions, they're going to need their players to step up, right? It's not going to be one that I think they can, they can grind out with good teamwork and stuff. It's going to be one or two players dropping 30 frags. And with Haste, of course, calling there as well. So things are different for Optic this time around yet again. So basically at the moment, we're just waiting on a couple more players, ladies and gentlemen. We had an update last night from uh, our good friends over at Valve, of yeah, course. Yeah, two. Two updates. Yes, so I think initially the first one was causing a lot of servers to crash, so that would have been kind of catastrophic if we'd had to deal with that. It's good that they do this. <laughs> our friends at Valve. Um, I'm just quickly looking at where the Optic guys were playing when they were at, uh, at, the, at the summit. So it looks like uh, Hayes will probably be over towards that, that B bomb site, which is probably one of the easier ones to do because he doesn't really have to rotate around if they leave him as the bomb site anchor. I'm not saying he can't like he played online with these guys in some pro league matches and he 
played perfectly fine. It was versus the Winter Fox playing on 200 ping. Um, but he still That's was a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't we don't need to get into that too much. But he was able to do the job and probably playing those matches. Even though Jason was was most likely able to to play, it's a good way to get him into it before coming to to this event. Um, but it's just going to be interesting to see that their T side, their CT side. It's not cookie cutter in any in any means, but it's it should be easier, you know, because people can hold their own positions. Inferno is a map where. Obviously, you need to know when to rotate over or a teeter player over, or uh, make sure that you're doing like retakes on the mid wall and that kind of stuff. But it's it's a little bit more clear cut than say like a like a cobblestone or an overpass where there has to be a lot of movement on the CT side. We see so many teams just get stuck on a side, or the teams that want to turtle too much on CT and can often get forced to save rounds and that. So what is it then? We talk about IGLs being swapped in and out as well. There's two interesting examples here. Renegades, I know they're not playing right now. We've got a couple of moments to fill and have a chat. Yep. Is it, you said, especially when I asked you, with these new players coming in, of course, uh, Nifty and Nexa, not a lot of talk is on this team, right? You were on you were on Renegades as well when a lot of the boys, when you were sort of doing most of the calling. Yeah. What, what's the go for them? You know, what's their way forward? We slowly got rid of all of our, our loud players. Me, <laughs> Havoc, Top Gun. Um, but it, Justin, Jake House, obviously usually a quiet guy, but I was talking to Gomez yesterday and he said, you know, he's really he's got a voice now. He's starting to be more vocal within the team. He always used to sit on the end and just do his own thing. He's moved in one spot now, close to the in-game leader. So that's good. Um, it's good signs there. Aaron, as a, he's he's normally one of the louder guys, but um, yeah, it, I guess it's going to come. Kassad will be, when he can talk, probably doing a lot of conversational things, telling them what they need to do. But this is the good thing about this era of having coaches and stuff, right? And having people who are going to be able to hold you accountable if you're not communicating properly. Um, they can help you streamline your communication, can help with all those factors. I have absolutely no idea what to expect from Nexa, right? Like, I, I, I guess the English as well. Yeah, exactly. And, and English isn't his native language, so it's going to be interesting to see how that all translates. So it's another team with the newest inclusion being an in-game leader and everyone has to yeah. sort of work around that a lot. Well, I assume like he would probably have had to have changed the way that he calls spots for the rest of the team because three guys have all learnt stupid map names from me. <laughs> so he's going to have to learn even more so. And with English as a second language, that, that's probably a, not an easy thing. Um, but I just don't know what uh, style of approach they're going to be bringing in. It should be hopefully more of a European play style because that's definitely what they need. For me, I think, you know, when, when we first became Renegades and a professional team, we never actually had the support structure to make us um, legitimate in, in, in the scene, like to help us uh, actually copy everybody else correctly. I'll have to cut you off there because we're, we're actually to ready to go. This I've got producing my ear. No, it was good though. We'll get back to that because we're going to need to. Let's go to our first game. It's going to be North versus Optic <coughs> Gaming. Let's see if they can adapt as we have. And we're going to hand it over to Henry G and Sadikis to kick us off. Thank you very much, Mitch. Yes, we're going to get into things immediately and we are going to do so on Inferno. And I do believe... We're live already, Henry. We are indeed. Optic on the T side here of Inferno. Going towards apartments with the bomb as well. Four sets of armor. Hayes with the smoke as well. He's currently in second middle. That smoke normally used towards the library side, but AZ, he's ready Ooh. and waiting. And what a shot to kick it off as well. Takes down Mixwell. Yeah, P2000, not the USP. He's got a second before he gets fully blinded up. It's Tarek that's found. Config will step up, and the two of them together, even though Kajin was there, do all the work. Kajin actually spotted them just as we jumped in and backed off the apartment, so they had all the information early on. Well, the inaugural round here at IEM is quite a spicy one from North. AZ with a PT-1000, like he said. Lights them up, find three headshots. Very simple procedure. Optic going towards the apartment. It's quite a common strategy these days on Inferno. Obviously, CT sides opt to have three players as banana at the start, but AZ towards Graveyard there, finding a pinpoint accuracy. As we go to round number two, we'll be a force by Optic. Didn't get a single point of damage inflicted that round. So looking to get something happening at the start. But Config aggressive, of course, towards middle and finds two more kills as we get into round number two here. It will be Naf and Rush to go down. They have got Tech Nines and a PT-50 for Hades. He's got a bit of utility to work with as well. Tech Nine is at least something well. to look forward to. But the problem is after, yeah, exactly. Config goes aggressive and <laughs> Nate down mid as well. It's kind of hard to open up the map when you're down early yeah. and they've got the range to their advantage. There's two M4s bought up in this one. AZ with the other, haven't gotten the kills. Both those players, Config and AZ, went to the rifles. They spent the most amount of money in Config. Three kills will eventually go down. Couldn't get the reload in, in time. And this has now opened up a little bit because Hazed steps up with his P250. Thankfully, MSL is hot on the heels of them, though, and takes the bomb back. So it won't get any further. Oh, Tarek does make it a little more expensive. Won't get any further carried away. They do get both rifles back, so it's just the UMPs that they lose, and that's probably the best choice in that situation. 
I would agree. Well, North have kicked it off in emphatic fashion there towards middle. Config, like he said, he's a very skilled and aggressive player towards middle. Finds two headshots, and to be fair, they got a couple of kills in return, but it's all for not really. No bomb being planted in either of those two rounds means a full eco going to round number three here. PG 50s, two of those, and a flashbang for Hayes as well. One of these rounds, it doesn't really mean anything. You see three players actually pushing down middle. This is the old NIP start on this map. Push down and just overwhelm your opponents and shut it down as quickly as possible, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. Three go down, make it four, and mix well one. HP, we're going to take a pause because they are having a bit of a nightmare. I'm going to assume it's technical at this point. I'm going to assume it's technical as well. Let's be fair. They haven't had guns out just yet. Yeah, Tarek's confirmed to us. We can see it on the bottom left that it is indeed technical. Yeah. So we've left the chat on so you guys will get all the spicy Yeah, memes. I like that though. You get to see what's actually really going on and uh, how true. these guys communicate with each other, you know? It's true. So the first time out, but we will uh, get Ooh, back into it nice. with the first gun round immediately after. And I do expect continued aggression from North. I will say, we know them to be a team already that likes to play banana quite early on from the CT side. Let's be fair though, they're against Optic who have got technically a stand in here. Hayes True. is the coach, right? So you're going to be overwhelming them. They're going to be relying heavily on tactics. Hayes is the coach for them. That was already calling objectives at the start of the round. It's difficult to play very fundamental good CS when you have a stand in. I I'm sure he's practiced with them. Obviously, he knows what they do, but he's not going to be up to kind of snuff right now, I don't think. So I think they'll be just trying to play Kind of very basic counter strike at that point. That's why North just overwhelming them. Keep pushing down. If it's working, if you're hitting your shots, why not keep doing it? So I can have a look and see what's going on right now. We're having a microphone problem for Tarek. So uh, that's ah. a bit of a problem. So they're just going to reboot the PC and see what happens there. But yeah, especially when you consider communication is going to have to be pretty substantial for them. Yeah, with it a stand would help. In. Well, I mean, more so. You just want to be exactly on the same page with Hayes coming in. Hayes, who stepped away from CLG. We thought he was retiring. I thought that was it. I thought that was it as well. It seemed like he was set on it. I'd, I'd spoken to him a few events prior to that decision, and it seemed like that was where he was going and that he was content with that. And then all of a sudden he popped up in the coach capacity. And, oh, look, now he's a player again. Well, yeah. But he will. I mean, to be fair, yes, he is a coach. He's standing in this event. Well, I guess he's got nothing to lose this one, really. There's no pressure on his shoulders. He could turn up and maybe have a decent performance. He's always been quite a cerebral player, like quite intelligent in clutch situations. I've always admired him in that respect. But there it is. 3-0 for North, and there's no real bonus round here. It's been quite Do you think it's sets. time to have a due award for Coach of the Year? Coach of the... It's very difficult to kind of work out... Quantify exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like how, what their contribution is. Because obviously they're not in-game leaders anymore. Um, so it's difficult. Like, obviously, you think back... Let's think about the, the, the greatest coaches of all time. You have to think... If you're talking about success, that's to be Zeus with SK, right? But we don't really know. He wasn't obviously in-game leading for them, but he's part of the most successful team. Probably the most successful we've had in terms of then recent you, eras. But then you look at Threat's contribution to NIP, even though they've been struggling lately, but the initial impact yeah. he had. You look at Starix's impact over the time with Na'Vi. Again, there, though, they say he wasn't quite analytical. He was more on the fly. Sure. So yeah, there's. I mean, it's interesting. I'm just. I'm just curious, Henry. I, I like, just like awards. Yeah, right. You just, I just award like for to, everything. I am. I am part of the generational problem right now, where the baby boomers <laughs> award the millennials for second place, and yeah. therefore they never are competitive in the workplace. That is the thing now, apparently. So you you want to make sure that you have to earn, your, prize for earn your trophies. You didn't just get one for turning up. No, I want one for turning up. Okay, you want that as well. Can I have a cookie? Um, we have some next door, actually. Jason's looking after them for us. Surprisingly, He's in, he's in charge nope. of snacks here today. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. Well, there you go. Well, it's going to be 3 0, and we are getting back into it momentarily. I can see the guys back on the server at least. Um, this will be a full by four optics, obviously, the first gun round. Mixwell, he did not force by in the second round. So, obviously, Yanko was discussing the all possibility on the T side of Inferno. I agree with him. I don't think it's 100% viable. We have a player like Mixwell. You've got a standing coming as well. He needs to step up here. Maybe he will buy the AWP in the first gun round and potentially try and find those opening picks. On the north side, Cajun B, obviously, the AWP as well. They've had quite clean rounds going forward. He doesn't need to buy one just yet. It's very common on this map, especially to bring out the double orbs config can do it and we've seen them in ESL Pro League especially running that set out the double orbs on Inferno and I don't see Optic actually making much of a dent here this is one of the strongest maps for North now they actually took down Astralis on a recently at a big event I think that was a star ladder in the group stages and uh, yeah there's not many teams that can take them down I don't think Optic will be up to the challenge today but hopefully we'll get a good game nonetheless Matt have you been joining uh, Sydney so far? Have you enjoyed your day on the beach? I, I did. I uh, I went out. I have a friend here from Canada that I hadn't seen in three years. We, okay. we were trying to discover or, or determine, I, I should say, excuse me, how long it had been. I think it was three and a half years is what we settled on. And uh, yeah, we, we went out and I uh, discovered the strict rules of Sydney nightclubs quite quickly. A decadent night um, out? Yeah, it was a decadent night out. Slept okay. for about 20 hours afterwards to compensate for jet lag and then went to Bondi Beach yesterday. Bondi is lovely, wasn't it? It was good. It was good. It felt like its own little kind of ecosystem. It was so tranquil and everyone was so tanned. Everyone was like a Yeah, we were the surfer. whitest people there. I think I was. I think I, if there was an award for that. I took the palest man in the entire country yesterday. I, 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 the guy's talking about me getting stunned, but I actually did okay. I'm not that burnt today. They're exaggerating. I'm. I'm, I'm 
Yeah, you're not quite lobster. Uh, I'm not lobster. Yeah. It's okay. I've got a bit of color to me, so that's better than uh, ghost white. Yeah, know? no, I, but we were definitely the whitest people on the beach. Yeah. Um, likely also the only ones without six packs that were looking super fit. That's how I tweeted out yesterday. So we've got that. We're bringing the dad bods to the beach. Yeah, dad <laughs> bods are, are, if they were in style, we were the stylish people, most stylish people there. Absolutely. And uh, no, it was great. It was good. And and I think tonight, hopefully, if there's time, I might swing down to the waterfront again by the opera house and, and uh, enjoy it with some coffee instead of some beer so I can actually remember it before I go home. Well, we're back into it now. 3 0 for North. And indeed, Mixwell brings out the AWP. And this is the aggression we're talking about. We want to show them no respect, but Hazy's having nothing of it. He's actually going to be the standard, finding those first two kills through the smoke. Hazy finds one back in return, but what an explosive round. And number four, it's been so far. That will set the tempo as well. You just finished talking about how they were going to be aggressive and relentless yeah. to try and get in Hazy's space. And that it also plays to their style. Well, if he's getting kills like that, and if they're going down that early, they're going to have to reconsider that game plan. It's late over toward B. Majisk. He'll be the only one here to hold off top banana. And two players inside of A, pit side or quad side, diggity side, I guess, now that we're in yeah, Australia. Yeah, so. But that means it's a long rotation. Majisk going down immediately. B's open. This should now be optics round. Yeah, especially with Tarek waiting in the doldrums here. Towards the boiler room, he's heard a player rotate down. This should be an easy frag. She goes towards second mid. I think they'll be saving their weapons at this point, almost certainly. So the aggressive play coming from North, we did discuss that being an idea going forward. It normally does work, especially in those rounds you get the 3 0 no bombs that the teams won't necessarily have all the equipment or even an AWP to work with. At that point, they did. Hayes is there, spraying through the smoke. I didn't actually think he saw a player. I didn't see it from his POV, but from what I could see, it was two players through the smoke. Nice start for him. One in return. Turn, but then Mixwell gets the all kill of B. They can kind of make the ass assessment, I guess, at that stage. The B's going to be open, and indeed it is. Make their way in, bomb down, four players surviving, and just AZ remains for North. So I guess they'll go back to a more traditional stance in the next round. They have got money to buy into the next one, just about. There are a few players, uh, but Lois, AZ is one of those, so he needs to stay alive here. That'd be great if he can save his M4 going into round number five here, but a good start from Optic. First game round going in their favor. Four players alive as well. And the AWP survives and actually found them a very beneficial frag. So I'm th almost certain the AWP comes out for, I was about to say, Cajun B, but I actually remember Config sometimes uses the main AWP role on this map especially. He's a more aggressive of the two, as we discussed in the earlier stages. He's got the spawn from mid as well. Yeah, he's like the player who like he likes to cheat. choose his spawn at the start and they say where he's going towards middle, apartments, banana, yeah. and Cajun B is a more kind of turret style, I guess. Well, call him. and I said he had the spawn to go to middle. He actually elected to go through library and get onto quad side, so he's not gone for the early peak with it, but yeah, you're right. He's still going to hold on to it CT side. They've gone up out middle a little bit early on here. Tarek, quite far up beneath the boiler window. Could try and take some map control for Optic. There was a bit of an aggression and a push from AZ in return on that, but it's since subsided. So it's more stable condition, and it's about utility at this point in time. They've already given up two smokes on the CT side. We'll see if there can be more blood out. We've got a minute and 20 still in the round as Cajun backs off as well toward the pit. Yeah, they won't be doing anything anytime soon. You can see the bomb down at T-Steps for now. This is all about just getting map control, pushing the CTs back from middle, make sure they have no vision towards that area. The problem is they've shown no presence of Banana. That's why Magisk, he's there alone for now. He's actually completely solo on that side of the map, boosted himself up on the broken wall as well. So four players for the CTs at A at the moment, but they're not done just yet. Like we said, they've pushed the CTs back. They've got one player there patrolling that area, and they'll go back towards Banana now with the same objective. They won't necessarily be finishing up a B, but they just want to get the same sort of job done. And Mages needs to be very careful. If he goes down without a frag, that's not going to be a problem. Considering he takes that mix well, that could have been disastrous. But he gets one, falls back. This is perfect for him. Yeah, great play. Immediate fall back, stay alive. Remember the second round, they did lose three players in the UMPs, or rather one was on the rifle config, and they kept the M4s, but their money went low, so they're not in the greatest position in this game in terms of losing the first gun round and then being able to recover, so North needs this round against Optic to continue trying to build momentum early on on the CT side. Likewise, Optic could break them, but a man down toward B, 16 seconds to work with before they're even in the site. And if Orange is one, and Orange is, excuse me, new box covered off, so the good kill by Rush to open things up, but they still have to contend with the fact that Majisk can look toward default. Naf goes down, Bomb's not going to be planted, if it's round oh. done. He's the only one left. Majisk does it all by staying alive. Beautiful stuff there from Majisk. You could see exactly what the CTs wanted to do at that point. The time was running down, as you pointed out. 16 seconds, they finally committed, and they didn't want to show it at all. They just wanted to keep buying time. Sure, MSL went down at that point, but Majisk not even spotting, not even showing himself until they had to go for the plant. It makes things so stressful for the terrorist side at that point. He finds that one key kill, bomb down, and then finds three more as well. Amazing round by Majisk boy, and brings North back into it. Another microphone issue for Tarek, I believe, so we'll have another technical issue here. But still looking at optics money, considering they had four players surviving the previous round. The bomb didn't go down, and you can see Tarek, he's low money. They can just about buy into this. It'd be a mixture of AKs and Tech 9s, but... Aww. North looking good. There's some nice camera shots here, aren't there? Yeah. 
This is beautiful. Mechanic underneath, doing some work on the wheels. Reinvent the wheel to run yourselves over. That's what Optic's trying to do with Hazed. And as we do see, we did see, and we can mention it obviously, that their money was very low. Hazed saving the AK, and that'll help them somewhat. But they're around three, 25 to about 3K, I think, on each player right now. Just confirm that for you. Yeah, so 1650, I guess, is the worst case for Tarek. But everyone else is around the 3K mark, so they'll be able yeah. to buy into the next round. This one, they could force in some pistols and try and go for a fast play. Yeah, Hazed has purchased. Well, I guess uh, he saved, he saved, saved the that. previous yeah. round, absolutely right. So he, yeah, they, around that, considering the money, they will have a mixture of maybe UMPs, AKs, maybe a Tech 9 here or there, depending on whether they want the utility to work with. So that round previously in Optic, that was more of a default. Bomber was on a T spawn for a while, got that mid control. Not necessarily wanted to have full presence there. This one just pushed the CDs back, back towards Banana, but wasted a bit of time there. Got rattled on it. Uh, made his boy find that first rag of the Banana area. He falls back. That's a perfect round for him in terms of CS play. Gets one kill, stays alive, calls for his teammates in as well. MSL pushes through the smoke, joins him on the side, runs that timer down, and manages to find four kills in total. So very good stuff from North there. 4-1 is the current scoreline. This is a Swiss format, so it's obviously a best of one, and it's get three wins you progress to the playoffs which is uh i guess in terms of this tournament we've got like four big names right north yeah. astralis sk you and could FaZe. argue three of the four best teams it's actually a really stacked tournament in that respect we've obviously got some underdogs as well a couple of aussie teams with chiefs i'm excited to see what they can do their first game against astralis they seem confident at least in the kind of interview we saw with them they had a little uh segment um saying they they're here to to win games they're not just going to go in thinking oh we can't beat these guys right, they're coming out fighting yeah you've got to you kind of say well we know they're the best team in the world we probably don't have a chance but we're gonna yeah. give it our best you know yeah. so it's good to see them actually turning up and maybe maybe causing a bit of a, a dent towards Astralis. who knows yeah and the other team that as well that we I'm, I'm curious and always keen to see more from is vici gaming we know that they've done very well in the past we know that they're improving they're they finally beat Tai Lu. sk this sk time. in the yeah. next game coming up immediately after this one and sk yeah it's not a premier level event but according to some people, it was the best event of all time. CS Summit, they just finally won an event. That's that's back in the realm for them. It's back where they, they feel and they belong. Them against Asian teams as well. They've got a bit of a rough record there. If you remember back in Malmo, Lu. yeah, Tai Lu took them down. That was one of the biggest upsets of that year, I think, and knocking them out and actually sending them home at that time. Well, tournament. let's not forget that Vega and Nip happened in 2016 as well. That's true. That 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 I would say... Con on all things considered at that <laughs> point obviously they was, did win a major yeah. the week before yeah, I yeah, will yeah. give you that but that, I think yeah the NIP one they were already on a downward spiral at that stage but yes that was shocking as well but still technical issue I think it's just a headset but Tarek it's obviously the first game of the day so I think it's a sound card issue um, from what we could see but he's running a USB headset so Majisk was captain obvious and said try different USB port <laughs> give that a go yeah why yeah. not yeah Fix that real quick. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yeah. Is there, is there power? Is it plugged into the wall? Yeah. Light bulbs burned out, guys. No, it's just not plugged in. How many CS players would it take to change a light bulb? Uh, probably about 16. I don't think our practical skills are very good at gamers. We've spent most of our time on In the, the dark pizza. anyway. We wouldn't know it was burnt yeah, out right. was the correct answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. None, because we wouldn't know it's burnt out. Yeah. My practical skills are awful. With stuff like that, I'm just like, yeah. Just piss pay someone to do it. Send them in. That's like the classic joke. You can adapt that to anything. Like, how many emo kids does it take to change the light bulb? Go on. Two, one to do it, and one to write a song about it. <laughs> how many ADD kids does it take to change the light bulb? Don't know. Who cares? There's a squirrel. That's good as well. Yeah. Relevant. So, it's, yeah, the age-old adaptation joke. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Well, if you are just joining us, where have you been? What a game has been so far. Aggression, clutches, big frags, haze with a double kill through smoke. It's all... It's all been happening. But for now, it's the chance to calm down. Technical pause. You can see them getting the headsets back on. That suggests we might be ready to get back into this. I think he's swapped headsets entirely. Yeah, he's gone to one of the, the typical ESL Plantronic massive noise-canceling ones. So I'm assuming, you can see it, it looks like he's a helicopter pilot. I'm assuming that that's uh, been provided, given that his is completely dead. And I think he's got the in-ears underneath of it. So he's gone full stadium setup in the group stages. Well, it seems to be working for now. We are unpaused and back into it. It's round number six. Like we said, it'd be a difficult buy for Optic, but they have got four AKs and one player down to the Tech 9. That's Rush. They've got four smokes and a couple of Molotovs. Not maximum execution potential there, but we'll see what they can do with it. Mages Boy aggressive towards B once again. Molotov at the bottom just to stop Ooh. the Rush. And we'll have a look as to where Config's going as well. He's going to be holding Arch. Not so aggressive this round. Cajun B, like we said, he's SVU with the rifling on the phone for now. Two shots through smoke there for MSL. No damage inflicted just yet. Much more aggressive force buy than I was expecting from Optic. 
Tarek obviously got dropped over from Rush, who's electing to stay on to the Tech-9. Yeah. Cajun as well is going to wait for that pop flash. We know that will partially blind him if you throw it from outside of the window arch, heading in the new position there to the right that we just saw from Tarek's perspective. It will partially blind him on that railing, but he can still turn and be ready for when they approach and not get flashed by anyone going directly through the doorway instead. Another very slow round here from Optic. You can see Hayes in towards the void room, so that's a decent map control coming in. Haven't got anything going towards middle just yet. That bomb's still down in T-spawn. The problem is they keep allowing Magus Boy to have this full control. It means they can have four players towards the A side of the map. And Magus, once again, look for that first frag and fall back. He's in great form right now. Not going to hit a shot, but he gets a team kill, so that's fine. Trade kind of works out in that respect. Yeah, that'll, that'll do, I suppose. Nav gets the kill. And then gets the kill. Hazed. Out from Boiler. Spots up utility thrown toward them from Arch side. So they'll head over toward Diggity instead where Cajun B waits in the pit. Easy has the crossfire set from in the site directly. They'll have seen the Molotov thrown from in the site now. What do they reckon from pit? Because as they continue to wrap around, AZ, ooh, sitting on the box. Should have been a sitting duck with the smokes off to isolate, but it's Config that still stays in this from in front of him. In fact, Moto in front of Library to get now two takes Hazed. And he's got a chance to try and go for more. Has to wait for the rotation. Bomb is planted. Has set. He's trying the cheeky wall bangs, but no need Ooh. to. And Rush has gone aggressive to catch off MSL. He's got time to rotate around with the default plant inside of the site. But he fakes out that he's going that direction. Molotov will confirm to him. He thinks he is, but Config reads it well and finds his four, third, excuse me, third kill in the round. Yeah, picks up the AK-47, finishes off in the 1v1 as well. Config, you got to wake up pretty early in the morning to catch him out. Hits three great shots, manages to pick up the orb as well. So Optic Gaming, another default round for them. Got that mid-control, went for the full execution. A decent smoke, bounced off the quad side to land in front of the bomb side to actually take some vision away from the CTs there. AZ, like you said, in the corner, only gets one frag. There was equal trades up to that point, which is actually favorable towards the Ts. Bomb planted, Config gets involved, two quick all frags, and then wins the 1v1 as well. So great play by him. It's going to have to be an eco now for Optic. Tech 9s, P250s, and a Deagle as well. Trying to stop that banana presence coming in from the CTs, but it is isolated. Look at those monotops going down. They have to fall back and go towards T steps. So that's not really going to be an option for them. So all the utility they had to try and push the CTs back, now eradicated. Rush has a flashbang. And that's about it. They go towards old mid. And I'm not really sure what they can do here. Best case scenario, they get a bomb down here with a couple of trades, but very unlikely considering they've used all of that grenade at the start of the round. Mixwell will head back up. Shots down. Spot the fact that there's two inside of an end getting more aggressive. I don't, actually don't know if he did spot him as well. Apparently not, because Rush walks around the corner and straight into him. He'll go back for a little bit more. Finally, Tarek puts him down, but we're just watching over his weapon, so they won't be able to push forward and grab the rifle, at least not with ease. Tarek, secondary good shot's going to force the rotation and open up B. They've got to be careful not to give up a plant. As Config gets in position with an AWP, smoked off, they'll cross him, and he needs to be careful not to go down, because then things get very awkward. Two rifles are picked up in this. It's just a bit dicey now. Config... Can't really do much about it with the orb towards the ruins. He'll be pushing through now. Trying to get something done. Needs back up from his teammates. So if he gets his orb away, that's an absolute nightmare. Going for the wall bangs. And at this point, Optic don't want to give anything away. Make them commit, and Hayes finds another headshot. This is actually looking promising now. Yeah, very. They have an op on the entry as well. Config does find a kill with it nonetheless. And it's going to open things up for AZ to walk in from CT. It's on to Tarek. He was the one without the weapon. Started it off extremely well with the Deagle. They'll clear sight, confirm that he has to be toward Banana. And set and wait. AZ's position so as <laughs> not to allow the bullet to do damage to the diffuser, it works. Well, I said best case scenario, get the bomb down, that happens. It actually gets down to a winnable situation as well. Tarek in that tight corner, he knows exactly where the bomb is as well. He's hoping he can find a wondrous headshot there with the Deagle. He's only got 7 HP. AZ knew exactly where he was. Takes him down. So we've had a couple of tight clutches there. North winning the Lions. Yeah, they 6-1 in their favor. Bomb going down, though. We get to third state loss bonus for Optic, so they get another full buy here. Mixwell back on the AWP. Has got the best of spawns. He'll be going towards second middle, watching towards the bedroom for now. And this is more traditional stuff. Three players from the CTs towards the B side. And just trying to stop the rush coming in there, using a lot of nades just to push them off at the start of the round. And looks like they're getting a little bit more aggro here as well. Boosted up. That's actually going to be config with the AWP. So first time we've seen him in this position, he's actually been patrolling towards middle. And waiting for that smoke to go down, he might face towards T-Steps if given the opportunity. Mix waiting with patience toward top middle to allow Rush to start to move forward as they've already gathered, ascertained control of the boiler position. Hayes will slowly clear off toward 
quad with a flash out. Potentially, he's going to go on his own. That's brave. He's got smoke behind him, so he's not spotted from our chance to back off from a disc, and they're going to wrap around in that direction. Position correctly to catch one, maybe, on the way by, but then MSL has to respond. He hasn't peaked early for information, but this four-man setup is going to be very solid. Good shot from Nap. That pulls MSL back. Tarek's got him. Great entrances from Optic. And now it's just two remaining in A. They've got the availability to wrap around through CT. Should they want to do so? And they may with AZ still in the site, but he's the only one there. They know it now. And they'll push onto him with aggression. 14 HP, sure to go down. Rush does so. And it's just one config remaining. EWP going to save it. Great shots from Optic there, I have to say. It was a much more defensive setup there from North. They wanted to establish control, but not to start there and allow Config to have the AWP. Not they've been doing with Magus, but obviously he's a lot more powerful and he can hold his own a bit more with the AWP. They get that set up and they go back towards the A side. One on the site, one in the pit, and then one deep in the arch as well. The problem with that setup is it allows Optic to get a lot of control towards middle. They send four players quite quickly up towards the arch side. Worked out there was no one in the library position, and then if they hit that shot in Arch, they've got a great chance to wrap into the bomb side. It's hitting shot after shot, it seemed as well. AZ could have been the fly in the ointment at that point. He hits one kill and maybe could have got a second as well, but the presence from the apartments, that's when the AWP of Mixwell came in. Legs him, I believe, as well. Took him down to about 15 HP. He couldn't really do much about that situation anymore. So there it is, Optic find round number two. Config saves his AWP, which is great. That money's actually not as healthy. It's been a few tie rounds here so he saves York but this is going to be a very difficult buy overall I think it'll be down to UMPs and one M4 so there it is two UMPs in total Major still yet to buy he's got 2100 in the bank so probably going to be on the SMG as well maybe a pistol yet to be seen he hasn't purchased anything CZ it is so it's down to config here I would say he has to go for an aggressive pick can't really sit back and allow him to fully execute he ought to be working a bit harder this round as MSL he won't be pushing all the way down banana this time and Config, like I said, he's going aggressive in the apartments. He's actually going right to the top of the steps, trying to find that first pick, but no one's going to be there waiting for him. Eric checks left. Teammate checks to the right, backed off already. They are on the CT side. Crazy the money dwindling that much for North after just one loss. Three rounds, lose one, three again, and then lose another, and they're forced onto CZs. In the case of Magisk and a UMP for both MSL and Cajun. Just shows you how important the money system is in CS. Like, even though you're winning rounds, sure. But if Tarek's taking you down to one-on-ones and just with Eagle, that's great. Config, though, he finds the first pick. We said he had to make something happen this round. That's an amazing start. And it looks like the bomb's going towards B at this point. So they might just be falling back completely, knowing that he's on this side of the map. Self-boost MSL. New box for Magisk. With just the CZ, he was very good there in round five to stall out the time and disallow the plant when they were late to walk in optic in 14 seconds. I think they hit the site. Good one, self. Well timed. 38 seconds this time. They're not going to be through yet. And they're slowly rotating back over. Player on speedway. That's confirmed. They'll have a rotation to fire in from CT, but only the CZ. Tarek is able to respond. Get both on the way through, but just concluded. And it's Config that was quick to arrive, but with AWP that was smoked off, he'll now have to sit and position himself from ruins to try and find a way back into his site. Again, gray screened. Tarek's made his way into Emo AZ. Gonna try and smoke off Banana so they can walk clean into the site from CT. And give Config some read. He's off the boost and spots there. Immediately has to hit the spray quicker. Can't, but he's still responding because Tarek has to repeak. Goes down immediately. They'll get on the defuse. Smoke off as well. This is big from AZ. That early smoke they have to push through Ooh. and Cajun's got it. Well played from North. Very well played. I love that a lot. That was actually quite calm. They get that first pick and funnel Optic back towards the B side. And you can see what they're doing. They only had a UMP and a CZ right at the B side. Just trying to buy as much time as they can, po they can possibly get. That incendiary that lands at the top gives them another 10 seconds or so. Just they call for the rotation to come in. They get one kill. It's just enough as the retake comes through. And that smoke that AZ deployed actually is very beneficial. Mixwell locked out of the situation once the bomb was down. Has to push through. Hope for the best. And he can't do it. It's going to be 7-2 now as North bring another round back in their favor. Mixwell very aggressive towards top of Banana. But MSL's waiting for him. And Burns him to a Chris there, and it's going to be an equal exchange for now. MSL looking to do battle still with a flashbang. It's locked between two Molotovs is the problem, and losing his vision ever so slightly toward the end, he oversteps the mark and gets taken down by the flames. So Hazed again finding another frag. I think he sits reasonable in the standings at this point. He has six and yeah, six. Yeah, all right. Him. All things considered. Now they have the man advantage, and AZ alone on the A site. The bomb is there for now, but Nap looks like he's falling back. 
He'll be heading towards the bridge position and presumably with the utility they have left for execution towards the B side. Config though, this is a little audacious from him. Trying to get another pick and it's going to be Rush waiting on the other side of the wall. He, if he gets one kill, that'll be about it. Ooh, gets Rush though, not hazed. You Ooh. thought he was going to go wide. He didn't. It leaves him to get both as he falls back. They Molotov him out of position, but it's a bit of a panic throw to be fair. And they're down a man as a result of it. Tarek's going to go hunting elsewhere. They'll take the bomb back over toward A as well with 44 seconds and give up altogether on config against the AWP. AZ as well could time this peak. Tarek's going to have no idea, but he's gone by. Naf's made noise. Tarek goes in. AZ's ready for it. Just Fair baits life. out the fact that Naf's in the site. And you're right, just wait for the rotation. Cajun gets there in time. Down he goes 8-2 to two for north. You can see why they have Config as the main orb on this map. It is just his playstyle so well. So many options to go aggressive at the start. This was such a perfect play. I said he'd get one and that'd be it. But what an amazing shot to find the second as well. Another rough round in terms of the money for north. They step up. AZ disciplined in that graveyard position as well. Doesn't overcommit. He knows he's by himself. Gets that one kill. And like I said, stay alive. That's all he has to do. You can't wallbang that position. He's just sitting there trying to make sure his teammates can come in. And if the T wants to kill him, he has to walk right up to the steps as well, which means he has a horrible crossfire coming in from the library positions. That was very well played from North overall. They're looking great right now. And that should be quite a harsh reset for Optic. I think they probably have about 2k per player. And this a bit is more, a tactical call because Hayes called this one. Yeah. So a difficult round there for Optic. So in terms of the money overall, Hayes, $4,200 rushed, just under 4k, but three players sit around two. So if they were to buy, it'd be a couple of AKs, maybe UMPs and some Tech Nines. Not amazing for the T side of Inferno North. Looking very comfortable at the moment. have been some tight rounds, but Config going above and beyond. I think he's on 14 frags and two deaths right now. They've only killed him two times after 10 rounds. That's quite impressive. Yeah, that's actually ridiculous. I mean, considering what we said about the money as well. Config only dying twice. I, to be fair, easy. Only three times, 10 and three. Yeah. But those guys are going to be sitting pretty. Yeah, so we're going to round number 11. So they didn't opt to force buy into this one. We said there was certainly an option here, but uh, just PT-50s and Tech-9s, no real armor investment. Rush has head armor, and Config once again aggressive, of course, towards middle, and MSL, similar sort of treatment towards Rush. He finds that first frag, and Config looking for a bit more, and he's just knocking them wow. down, double kill coming in. And there's the triple. Behind the barrel, he finds Tarek. That puts him up now to, I believe, if I can do my math, 17 and two? Yeah, yeah not bad at all. Very good. And just will close it off. The other half of that duo we often talk about. Interchangeable, I think, as Moses said, because both of them have the ability, the skill level to go off. You just never know when it's going to be one or the other. Yeah. Two very hot properties in CSGO right now. But still, round number 12. Another buy for Optic, 9-2. They get the five AKs out. Not the best in terms of... Uh, Utility side of things, mix with just the one smoke, no flashbangs, but that suggests they might be going for more of a set piece once again, because they've gone for all their smokes and a couple of Molotovs here as well. They have been losing the game in terms of map control towards Banana, and Mixwell, he's feeling the burn there as he has to fall back, goes down to about 60 HP. Tarek looking for that, and Palmer's control once again, and all bangs coming in, and Config, this is what top orbers do. Change your position every single round, be unpredictable, don't allow them to try and counter what you're doing. So he's been towards middle, Banana, pushed apartments. This time he's actually going to be a little bit more defensive in the same area, but this shows his presence, and he might even go to the other side of the map now. I'll have a look as to where he goes. He goes towards Arch. So he started off in apartments and there's the wall bang. Hayes takes a dink. Does that Hazy firing it in. Have you seen the movie The Mask? Jim Carrey. Yeah. That's what Tarek's gloves remind me of. In Those what green way? hands. Oh, right. Like yeah, they, sure. They just look at skin wrap. Yeah. Ninja Turtles, maybe? Do you want to do some mask quotes? Um, did you miss me? <laughs> that was my favorite one. <laughs> Guess not. Yeah. Well, if someone gets an ace, maybe you can shout, somebody stop me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a great movie. Yeah, that was good. Good old Jimmy Carey. Well, for now, they have actually managed to get something going towards the B-side. That's actually been a massive problem for Optic overall. Mixel's at the top now. It's with bated breath, I said that. Obviously, the CTs can actually flash over and challenge for frags that we've seen time and time again. But for now, slightly more aggressive towards middle as well. That's going to be MSL, not allowing them to walk up as freely as he did before, and he finds a couple of kills there as well. So great job by him as Tarek and Hazard go down, funnels them towards B, and I don't think they'll get much done here. Mage just finds a hell of a headshot on Convict. He's winning absolutely everything so far. Gets the orb shot and nails the headshot with the PD50 as well. Good stuff by him. He's just not missing a beat right now. Yeah, this is, this is one of the best games start to finish we may see from him. He's very complete package. 19-2 and two on round 13. Yeah, that's pretty good.
yeah, Optic a little bit out of their depth right now, just getting outclassed in almost every area of the map. They've had a couple of decent rounds and tight clutches as well, don't get me wrong, but overall, North have just looked like a great overall package. Cajun hasn't had to really do anything in this game, Matt. He's True. on three kills from five deaths. He's like, yeah, it's not like he's playing badly. That's oh, the 99 damage. Wow. Is that an orb shot and a nade coming in? Uh, I, I heard the nade. I didn't yeah. see any other damage done. That would be ridiculous. Yeah, but uh, my point is, it's not like he's playing badly. It's just that there's no kills to be had because Hompik's killing absolutely everyone right now. So it's absolutely fine. But uh, Rush, one HP at the start of the round. That's rough. They did invest in this round uh, slightly. Tech Nines, Deagles, and a couple of sets of body on there as well. Hompik, another kill. I think that's his 20th. Why not? 20 and 2. That's not bad. Hayes finally manages to take him down. Gives Tarek the AWP. We've seen them... Pull rounds out of it, go to a two versus two on the B site when Tarek got the two deagle kills, bottom of a banana. Don't ask me what round number that was, but I'm sure you all remember. So it's possible picking up this AWP, they can open up some space for themselves. As Tarek gets flashed off, however, and MSL gets the lineup. He still manages the kill in return, but Majeska's pushed out from bottom of a banana. He gets two, Rush, another hazed combined with Rush, will get him back with the deagle. So it leaves it to another two versus two, and the race is on to the B site. AZ's going to beat them. Do they have a smoke? They have a flash instead. So no smoke down. Dodge that flash. Second one goes above. AZ's going to be close. Turns to dodge it. It's the right play, but Hayes couldn't find the kill. Tarek manages it. And there you go. You pick up the AWP. Something in an after all. That's actually down to Hayes. One dig there to get things off. And we saw Comp get the first kill. Like we said, the 20th coming in. But Hayes takes him down. And that's the opening they, were, they needed to actually get into that one. Another kill comes in. Tarek gets the AWP, as he said. And if no smoke, that's normally a bit of a problem. But actually, it means they have to go for the fights. Tarek wins it with the AWP. And they get round number three on the board. I still think there's plenty of money for North here, absolutely. So four and fours and an AWP as well. Config, we're heading towards middle this time. It's more kind of standard position, if you will. Looking towards underpass and it's a bit of damage there. Smoke blocked his vision as well. Mixed well. He's in the AWP towards the bottom of mid and then the Southern Majors will be challenging once again. I love that setup there. Two incendiaries to start. This means you completely eradicate any risk of the T's being towards logs or towards that tight corner on the left-hand side as well. It's actually a great setup. Just to... Uh, get that map control to start and deny the T's being able to rush. So, here we go then. Back towards another default for Optic. Hayes down to 41 HP. Rush gets closer. Bit of a failed molly. It sounded like an explosion in an 8-bit sound cue from Final Fantasy 2. That's exactly what I was thinking. Maybe even Final Fantasy 1, Henry. Ah, uh, yes. Config misses a quick flick to the right. Tarek wants more. Completely smoked off. Rush is tagged inside of that as well. He's down quite low, so it's Config to be fair. But they still have the crossfire set. Config gone. Cajun gets the first. Drops inside of the pit. Can't find more, and that leaves AZ in a tight position. He only manages one, and the favor goes to Optic. Yeah, looking very decent in this round indeed. They've got the man advantage. Tarek patrolling bedrooms, and then some. Takes an MSL. Mixer with a quick kill to finish things off as well. That's number four obtained. We're going to round number 15 here. I think the money's going to be low overall for North. So Optic have actually been playing pretty sound CS. Getting that mid control, refragging together, pincering the bomb sites, and that was actually quite impressive for them. They get five at the end of this. Yeah, they're after, all right. After losing the pistol, I don't think this is the worst half. The way it was looking was going to be a one-sided affair, but a couple of chance rounds there, especially the previous one with the Deagles, they've actually got themselves back into this game. Well, last of the first half, Nade from Rush. Top middle's going to land and do decent damage onto both Config and AZ. Tried to go aggressive yet again with the pistols. Smoke down bottom and Anna mix ball. Gives it some attention, but then backs off because the Molotov's there, meaning North can't push through it, so they've got more time to look toward top middle, but they do have to consider that he is a sitting duck if anyone pushes down. And MSL's getting closer to doing so. So the additional smoke comes out. They want to stop. We're calling a stop to the round. So both damage teams was already have done, agreed. But, but both teams agreed. And, uh, yeah, damage was done, but we weren't over the minute mark. Config hmm. says he crashed. Okay. But they've agreed to it. They agreed to the stop, so this should just be no problem. Start I the guess round uh, no kills are uh, actually inflicted, so that's not a huge deal. You, you don't know how much damage you did with the nades, right? So it's no way of knowing. So it's absolutely fine. Both teams agree. That's not a problem. Config crashed. We'd rather do the round again instead of... Uh, Kind of assuming what could have happened, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because in order to call a stop that actually goes through, both teams have to type it. 
Well, we caught it just in time. So this will be round number 15. It's a tough buy for North. Been a lot of tight situations, to be fair. Optic, I don't think the scoreline does them justice. They've had a lot of tight one-on-ones, 2v1s -on -one, that uh, North, have, especially Config, have stepped up in and managed to run away with there in that respect. But here we go then. Back into it nice and quick. And it's going to be the Deagles towards middle. Config, that's ambitious. He gets punished by Rush at the start of the round. Essentially, same nades they threw in the previous. Yeah. So Rush getting the kill this time. It goes even better, perhaps, you could say. If Config was crashed in the last round, he's dead in this one. It won't matter. Additional nades low. Smokes in Banana. No push up this time from MSL to get toward the tree. He's going to go back around toward top middle instead. So, slight change in the round, but that's all right. Optic are doing fine. Yeah, at this point, this is a dream situation for a T side in Inferno. You find a nice early pick. You've ascertained that low money as well. Config has a Deagle. You've still got all your utility and an AWP as well. Just. Take them out piece by piece, dissect it. You can even have trades. You'll keep that man advanced as long as you're playing together. So no need to rush, no need to commit. Just show presence. Take banana for now. That could be an option. And if they do that, they just need to fully execute and they should be absolutely fine. Tarek, he seems to patrol towards this apartments area quite a lot. Takes a nade to the face. Not going to be disastrous for him just yet, but he'll be hunting for the frag. Even if he goes down, he wants to get information. Is there a stack to this side of the map? If he gets one kill, is there anyone else there? If there is, his teammates are going to go straight towards B. Massive gap in the smoke, but it won't matter. No one pushing through yet. Tara commits, gets one. There it is. That's perfect. Now they can still go towards me. There's a reaction from the CTs. Round over. Nothing majors can do about this. Might oh, get oh. one. Might get one, Matt. That's all, right. all it'll get. All right. Calm down, Henry. You're the one getting excited. Now, you were a little bit <laughs> over ambitious there, I think. Too keen to get a highlight clip, I know. Yeah, that's it. It's Cajun will get one here shortly on Tarek, but he's got a large order in front of him, especially with an AWP ah. staring down. Banana, 10-5, you said it. Not a bad comeback, considering how bleak it looked in the middle of that first half. Yeah. And Optic have done well to give themselves a bit of a chance. Yeah, I think this could have a few more twists and turns. So Optic certainly have a shot within doing this. So we're going to take a little break, Matthew. Catch our breath and see whether Optic can indeed come back. It was an incredibly quick and 
authoritative start from North. All things going their way. However, Optic have clawed back into it. We sit 10-5, despite the config, I think, hit 20 and 4 at least in that first half. Yeah. I think that may be where he ended, but he was on fire. Yeah, we said they'd be displaying like uh, some sort of disrespect in terms of they know there was Optic without a stand it with a stand in, for example, and they're hitting all those shots. Maybe a few rounds slipping away there, but still a decent half on both sides. I would say they'd both be relatively happy with that one. Five rounds enough to work in here as we get into Tisa pistol for North, four sets of armor. Emma Style with the single smoke as well. He's actually going to be towards the bottom of mid for now. Config does get that early banana control. That's hugely beneficial. The fact he gets up there without taking any damage and not taking a nade to the face or anything like that. That's perfect. So occasionally we'll be joining him as well. They've got some. Apartments, kind of uh, play going on. They just got easy there as well towards Boiler. Just showing presence at this point. Don't want to give too much away. Just trying to bait out any nades the CTs might have. Four players towards that side of the map. It's just Tarek who's at B holding the coffin's position. So he might have a bit of trouble coming his way. It's looking likely to be an A-sided attack considering they have one smoke and one flash. The smoke's been deployed already. And that's going towards the uh, library side. That's quite usual these days. And it's going to be a B split now. This will be through CT spawn and uh, towards that B side. Fast, but heard. Oh, this is a nightmare for Tarek. Yeah, big problem. Mixwells gets one, catches him just before they vanish out of sight toward the B site from CT. That'll help Tarek, but he's gone passive, and he's going to try and catch them off. They jump around the corner, though. That resets his aim. He can't find the headshot onto AZ. And the rotation will come with three from Banana. Gives them an immediate line of sight, but AZ turns around to find a kill. AZ does what he can. It's on the mix while well, managing to get config. That's bomb as well. It's down on new box. They've now got the advantage in the situation, and Mixwell hits Majisk. That's going to be his third in the round, a very substantial contribution. But look at the red HP. It's down to 37 versus 12, favoring Cajun B in a one versus one. And it's Hayes, the stand-in as well, who's going to try and get aggressive. Catch out Cajun in the middle of the plant. He may do so. Bomb gets planted. Hayes misses the shot, though, Ooh. and that gives Cajun the chance. And it's enough for North to find 11. Oh, that's gutting for Optic. After Mixwell did so much into that round as well. Some amazing accuracy with that USP. So like I said, as we were building up into it, one smoke used towards the A side of the map. That B split coming in. And Mixwell, he gets one kill. We thought that was enough. He gets the information. At least he tells Tarek, you need to watch out. You've got a lot of that action coming your way. And the reason that AZ jumps past him, you spotted it. The reason is he can't get a double kill there. So even if he takes down AZ to reset his aim to get the second kill, that's a nightmare. He doesn't even get that going. So it's looking good for North. Mixwell shuts him down. And and I feel like Optus could have won that. Like, Cajun did very well, but with low HP, Hayes, I'm, I'm saying he should be finding that frag. He had the opportunity to hit a couple of bullets, couldn't quite do it. Ooh, into the Molotov. Oh. They hear the tick, but the flash over, they lose their vision. So Tarek does well to get one in that situation. It was poor timing, unfortunately, for North. However, they do manage the trade. They'll go against Mixwell, who waits inside of smoke. Nafli found first. But Mixwell can do nothing of it. He's got to back off towards CT, as aggressive as he'd like to be. Can't afford to do so. Rotations will come in now, at least, from Optic. Yeah. What a disappointing pistol round. If Hayes hits that shot, we have a game. Yeah, just a note as well. They did not force buy into this round in the second round of CT. A lot of teams, it's like 50-50 right now. Some teams opting to go with this sort of mentality and having all the guns and utility and your defuse gets to work with, or a lot of teams still obviously force buy in that second round as well. It's very difficult to win these rounds on the CT side of Inferno, but we'll see what they can do. They managed to get one kill so far. The round is out of their reach for now, but Mixwell might get a cheeky frag here. Does some damage, that's all they'll do. And quite a clean sweep overall for North. Towards that beat side they go. MSL finding three frags with the UMP, farming a lot of cash at 1,800 in total. And we get into this one now. Has to be another eco here. And I see an HE being purchased. This could be the airstrike map, we call those three of them. Yep. So you can go towards banana or bottom and middle. You run down with the HEs, and if you sometimes get a bit lucky, you can take a player down with you. It'd be quite sloppy from North to really overcommit and go towards banana. SCR3 or even North. Yeah. Needs going banana. Yeah, so it'd be sloppy to even kind of challenge that point. You just want to be holding up and waiting to see whether this comes in. MSL might find it though. There it is. There's no real reason to commit that deep into it. You can hold the T-step corner and just watch they're getting the car. You're just getting the information. You know they've got nothing's already to work. They can't really pick you. The fact he goes down is a bit of a risk, but uh, still should be a very recoverable round for North. They're not going to give anything away. No weapon gathered by Optic, obviously. Here's a little cheeky spot through the railing. Still working out the uh, definition of cheeky. Yeah, you'll get there. Just listen to me. Um, I usually don't. Well, that's your, that's your main problem. Oh, that's true, actually. You're right. You can see the bullet ricochet off the wall behind his intended target from Hayes, so they know he's towards CT. Smoking off. And self boost from AZ will take down now, but substantial damage dealt to him. He won't Ooh. replicate that peak toward 
CT to find anything further. The pistols will gather and try and do damage. Exit kills where they can. Config's hunting with the UMP. But he doesn't want to overcommit to it either, knowing that they're lurking around the corner. Good shot from Rush. It's getting a bit dicey now for the terrorist side. They can't lose the round at this point, but still costing them money going forward. Three players alive for now, and you can see Optic just trying to keep them with the bomb as long as possible. Just trying to take as many North players down as they possibly can. Mates will be hunting now. Maybe more damage down to 15. They just want to make sure they kill absolutely everyone on the T side here. And it's going to be Mages Boy just finding more cash down, and he's going to be looking for this kill on Rush as well. He's low HP. He'll probably go down with the bomb. Liz, he'd rather die with a bomb than give the satisfaction to the city side. Is a action replay of the grenades? Bang! Boom! We call that I, I think that's more boom. You're right. Yeah. But uh, 13 five, and like we said, optic, nice full buy. This is why they do this. If you're the underdog team, or necessarily if you have the, the big lead, you do this sort of play because you have everything you need. You get the fuse kits, orbs, smokes, flashbangs, and no one's on UMP. So this is. The best possible start you can have. Cajun be very fast with Banana. He'll be looking for that first round. That damage inflicted. Oh my god. Wow. The nades are, yeah, nades are doing great job for Optic and holding off this B site with guns up this time. This could be a big problem for North. They're very susceptible at going down to the M4s in one shot now. MSL, however, will get Mixwell on the way through. It's Tarek. Newbox has to smoke himself off. He's a little late doing so. So leaves him on 36, and Config's able to find him. Hayes to respond. Can't land the shots if he had. It was red HP, and Majisk is able to strike back instead. That might be the difference maker in the fact that it's a three versus two now the other way. As Naf will fire in to find Cajun. They've got the HP advantage still bombed down in the site, but they don't have vision of it, and that should be planted right now from Config. If they knew he was going to do so, then they had one more nade. It would be a perfect situation for them. Instead, they'll back out, play double a double stack, stack toward Banana on the retake. The old switcheroo. So the idea is you kill one player in this position, you don't assume the second one will be there, and he comes and denies a diffuser. It's great in this sort of setup when you have low HP players. And especially with the op, they can go aggressive on the first pick, because if they find that first pick, oh, it won't no matter. Problem. Yeah, they have to push it. They have to. And I think the M4 has been fired from, or excuse me, the AK has been fired as well, so they should read this, but they haven't seen it. They haven't read it at all. They're still clueless inside of the site. Config calls they're off the bomb, and now they'll start to go back toward it, but a secondary smoke, they're going to stay on it. This should work. Rush should have the defuse here, and Hazed gets the assist. Rather, it's Naf that gets both kills, but a little bit hairy for a moment. Absolutely. I wasn't sure they were going to pull that one off, but the smoke going down the bomb pretty much guaranteed it as well, and Config pushing through. There was a nice idea. When you're low HP, and most teams will do that towards the back right, emo as you call it, and you put two players there, and the CTs kill one, and they don't assume two is going to be there. Obviously, this new position, um, this version of Inferno lends itself to that as well, but as soon as you smoked out, that's a bit of a problem. That shuts it down, and Config almost recovered the situation, but wasn't meant to be. I'll touch on why they went for that banana rush. Oh, for this round, we have a bit of a, a quieter moment. But for now, another four by four north, five AKs, no air or uh, just yet. Next well, he'll be on the AWP himself, actually towards the middle. Not as aggressive as Config was being. This is more of a default round. So I'll just touch on that now. The reason North go for that fast banana play and the first gun round there is obviously, like I said, most CD teams are forced by that second round and won't have the incendiaries to actually deny a banana rush. So North try and do something very fast. is actually quite well known for running these tactics in when he's actually controlling the CT money. And they get in there, but it took so much damage at the start of the round. Didn't really make things possible in that 2v2. So Tarek, passive towards CT, will peak with NAF boosted. That boost is kind of... <sighs> There's been no direct counter to it, per se, but it's kind of faded off in its relevancy. It, it seemed like it was going to be a very overpowered position when it first came in, but I think teams have gotten used to just walking a little bit deeper inside of the smoke so they can't be seen above yeah, it. Yeah, they just walk right next to the wall, right? And you yeah. can't actually spot anyone coming in. So it's it's quite a situation. It's good for one kill these days. You don't want to be staying up there for more than the first five bullets or so, but it, it still has its place in the game. This is a full execution for North. They are so good at these sort of plays. Wall of smoke, some Molotovs everywhere. Let's see if Optical what it takes to hold them off. So there you go, hug the right side, but the smoke's deeper There's the Molotov, this time. Though. And the Molotov didn't land. That's the one you were talking about to try and bounce off the wall. I don't think it actually... Yeah, it oh, is, it did, it did land. You're right, you just spotted it. But just gets the shot on Tarek, so they did force them off, but because the deep smoke, which allows them the Molotov, it actually still cost them because they went in a little bit too early and the shot was able to go in before the trade was able to come back out. Rush, however, on a retake toward Banana, will get AZ down. But the bomb is still ticking. Look at Cajun and Majisk on the HP. It doesn't even matter. Both of those players are still in the fight. Although, Mixwell and Rush are able to pull two of them back, and Config's found this will be a defuse. 
It will indeed. So that's one of the first full executes we've seen at least with our Molotov goes down on the CD spawn smoke. When the Molotov I'm talking about is the boost position we're talking about at the beginning of the round. It lands on that little ledge and it means you have to smoke down the CD spawn to deny vision and the Molotov on the ledge position as well to flush out the CD that's on there. The problem is the timings were slightly off. As soon as that smoke went down, the Molotov landed just after and it didn't really do that much damage to the CT. He manages to get one kill, causes a full banana execution at that point, drops down and it's a bit of a mess from North at that point. You can see the timings just off by about two or three seconds. It wasn't really um, the beautiful execution we've come to expect of this team overall. If you think back to like Cobble on the B side, for example, that should have been an easy kill for Mixer. I thought he'd hit that all day long, but still Naf is there to back him up and take the frag instead. Optiker very, very much in this game. This will make it 13 to 8 with neither pistol. So in some ways, North, they have work to do. They looked convincing, or at least Config looked very convincing in the first half. Damage done into AZ, bomb down, 9 HP. This will be the round. To continue to try and get him with headshots of plenty through the boards, the logs. With guns to come back up, and North definitely has to be feeling the pressure in this, especially with a stand-in for Optic. They need to yeah. know that they're the, the upper, I was going to say the upper dog. You know, instead of the underdog, but the the, the the advantage, the favored team, the favorite. Favorite, the favorite, it's fine. Yeah, uh, upper, upper, do dog. upper dog doesn't really work. You know, if I'm, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm your down dog, will you be my up dog? Yeah, sure, why okay. not? All right. So um, we'll, do, we'll do yoga at Bondi. Yeah. So the, the, or as Chad calls it, Bondi. Bon yeah, he does call it that. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's weird. weird. Snapped. He'll get it someday. Well, four and four for now. CT's aggressive towards the B side. It's an equal exchange. That traditionally does favor the T side, especially at this stage of the round as well. It's so early on, this means the city's defenses have to be spread very thinly now. And we'll see whether they can recover. Good news is they have the mix or orb, so maybe he can do something into this round and fight back. We'll see what happens. One minute 20 coming in. Still will have smokes and flashbangs and a few Molotovs as well for the terrorist side. Tarek trying to get some intel towards the bottom of B. Smokes it off as well, stops them coming in. He'll probably be left alone now. He will indeed. His teammate Rush falls back, and like we said, they're going to be spread thin regardless. So they might as well take a bit of a gamble. They're going towards the A side this time. That smoke should deter the terrorist for a while. And if Tarek can get one frag before he goes back, still has his own smoke, of course, as well, buys him some more time. He's just trying to funnel them towards A. That's his main objective. Here. They'll be pushing through. They are pushing through. Tarek spots it, backs off. Molotov buys him a little bit more space. He's alone. Yeah, that's perfect. Rotation has to come in, but they've forced that and gone back the other way. Yeah, that's what he wanted, to scare them off. Ishii isn't doing so. They did lead a rotation for Mixwell. He's got to go back ever so slightly, and they've given up pit side. Not entirely, though. Naf still here is able to take down AZ, which slows them further. And look at the flank already out in middle from Banana. Tarek is going to be all over them if they can't get moving, if they can't find space in the site. Naf's done a tremendous job. Mixwell goes to the Deagle, and Tarek's already immediately underneath. A great rotation from Optic. Mixwell shaking his head there. He has been pretty streaky, I would say, this game. He's had some great moments and some shockers as well. A few missed shots into that round. Luckily, his teammates there to bail him out. And the good news is, Optic find another round here. He's got to leave us on 4-3 to three in the CT favor. And North just throwing every tactic they have so far, but just can't finish it off. And Optic Gaming, one is already back into this game. It'll be another eco here for North. Deagles, PT-50s, a couple of sets of body armor, no nades, and aggressive play. Same what we saw Ooh. from North in the first half. Running most of the frags here. Very quick round indeed. Just one kill picked up by AZ. I'm impressed with Optic right now. Yeah, looking assertive. Neither pistol, and they are definitely controlling the pace right now. Yeah, neither pistol and a 3-0 on either side. So that's actually very true. That's impressive for a team for standing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe on with North on one of their best maps, I think, right now. He's still got it. Still got it. One more year. All right, that's it. <laughs> Mixwell's going to throw the first nade down in mid. The only, it seems. I didn't quite catch anyone throwing them from Banana that round. They may have done so just now. Yeah, they did toward logs, but no one up that far, so no damage done. MSL will continue to sneak his way forward toward Banana. Smoke lands, and they'll be limited out for a moment. Here we go. Cajun B on the AWP this time. Like we said, he is the main AWP, if you're not aware, of the north side. It's just sometimes Convo will pick it up, especially on this map, and we'll see whether Convo can find his opening picks now. This will be an interesting duel, though. Tarek, aggressive. By himself as well, gets flashed in, takes one kill down, he wants a bit more. Most teams will fall back in this situation, Mixwell comes in to find yet another. I think that was actually through the wall, and he's going for a bit more here. Hayes joining in, four on two, and it's up to Cajun B and Majus now. Shut down once again. Optic are starting to turn up, starting to turn up here in the second half. Majus will start to push in toward the carts. And look into the site. 
Mirage is going to rotate back. He can be caught by this. He is. Perfect timing from a just going to wait through. Swings wide. Knows that Pit's the next likely position. And he certainly is correct. Hayes gets taken down. And they're back in the round. Oh, not only that. Tarek's going to be limited by the Molotov. But makes a snap decision to head toward the apartments instead. Which means he'll have good ground covered before the bomb is fortified in a post-plant position. They get it down early. Cajun, thankfully, effect, elects to stay on the site. But they're both going to go from diggity. And Tarek will be the first out. He'll get the information more so I thought was going to get the kill, but Cajun is up to it, and it's Mixwell on an AWP that has to work his way back in the site. First shot missed, they know exactly where he is, and finally North are able to get another round. Yeah, it's been a while, but North by number 14 here. Comes down to the clutch, 2v1 with Mixwell there. Yes, both North players are low HP, but he has the AWP, so it's not the best situation for him. Pulls up the 5-7, can't get anything going. The crossfire working out for North there. It's their first round in five, I believe, as well. So still... Not out of the woods just yet. Lose this one, that's quite a harsh reset for them. So if they can find match point now, that'd be amazing. If not, Optic gets straight back into this game. Round number 25, we are going the distance here. Tarak towards B, throws a grenade down. No one to receive it just yet, though. And Config looking at that B control once again. Decent aid by him, perhaps. Doesn't mm. land. Just, yeah. I thought Tarek was going to get nailed by that. Yeah. Didn't even touch him. Unscathed. So Molotov down and MSL in config. With now smoke deployed by the CTs are bleeding out utility and getting a lot closer early in the round. All things considered, for the great banana currently plays early and a little bit of an exchange. Showing of testosterone, perhaps. And who could spray through? And it's actually gonna work for Kate Config, but Hayes great position over toward the apartments, gets Majisk back on the other side of the map. So we go 4-4. And this will be a reset for North, keep in mind. Late in the game, it could pull Optic right back in this. Big round, absolutely. Optic need this one to find a couple potentially going forward. Looks well with that orb towards CT side. He will get a gap in the smoke in a few seconds. And MSL could come around the Ooh. corner, gives him the opportunity, and he takes it. Four and three. Yeah, smoke dissolved. In the line of sight existed. Molotov down to top banana config. Likely to push through or just sit to wait. In fact, they're going to bring the hop into the picture, and that's going to be covered off. Mixwell's already got that angle as well. They tried to go with the smoke and beat him to it. They can't. Mixwell has an excellent round. Off to get the reset they're looking for and go 14 11. Yeah, this could be double equal territory for North now. Might force into this round and just try and shut them down before they have a chance to swell their own bank accounts, and it looks like that's exactly what they'll be doing. We're on round 26. In the last 11 rounds, Config has only managed five kills. He was 20 and four at half. True. Yeah. He's had a bit of a rough time since he switched over, hasn't he? Well, they do force by into this. The idea, obviously, they don't want to allow Optic to get lots of money in the bank, shut them down as quickly as possible. Certainly a team capable of doing so, but it's going to be two kills coming for Tarek. Fully blind, spraying through with three kills of the M4A4, and once a bit more as well. Is this the somebody stop me moment? It might be. He's got three of four, plus a massive amount of damage onto Majisk. could very easily get out of that hole. Tough, it goes tree instead. As they continue to try and spray in. But North are getting shut down. You said it's double eco. Look at this, one HP and two HP. Throw the fisticuffs at them. Tarek's got four. He's looking for it. One HP, all he needs, and he'll get the ace. He's gone the wrong way. Colder, Colder. Someone tell him. Maybe he's throwing 600 bucks. That's what he's going for now. Yep. Sit back. And then, well, this is the thing. You, you mentioned double eco. That's what I was about to mention is that if they had to get a bomb plant, that all changes. They get nowhere near that. And look at Optic. They're all sitting back, I think, trying to let Tarek find out exactly where he's gone. But Tarek's not really hunting in the right direction, is he? He's not. But Tarek, I think he's done his job already. Four kills for the B site. Flashbang was decent. Full spray with that M4. Three kills. And a PT50 frag as well. Made his boy one HP. He's sweating right now. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, well, just don't give him the ace. Ah, here it is. Yeah, there it is. Ta it. I knew that was going to happen. As soon as the teammate spotted him back away cleanly, I was like, here comes Tarek. So Tarek does get the ace. That's good, though. Team like, effort. It might seem like a, a very small issue, but giving your, your star players aces and rounds is a boost of confidence up, get them in the zone, get them fired up, you know? So that's, that's, that might sound like a silly thing, but that's actually quite a cool idea. Yep. You know? But um, still, like we said it would be eco territory for North. They're going to get 2k into this round, $1,900 per player. And this could now be an optic game. Who knows? It's going to be a full eco here for North. And just Glocks and one PT50. No nades at all. So it, it can't really do anything in this round. It's This could be one of those times where you just choose a bomb site, hope you get one trade, and maybe a bomb down, sneak it in. But uh, it's very unlikely, especially with that. Once again, control of Banana coming in favor of Optic, pushing down a little bit as well. Bombs are T steps for now. 
Tarek will look inside of the smoke. Obviously see nothing, but at least has the bottom of banana covered off. Four north. My goodness. 6-0 after pistols. This is the position they find themselves in another clean sweep, it appears. As Optic will find 13, they're within one round of north. The guns will be drawn this time from the terrorist side. They're still not in a in great position, are they? Tactical timeout called. There is enough for an AWP, but I highly doubt MSL is going to buy it and go glass no. cannon for anyone or drop it over. No, because if he does that, he has no armor himself. Right? That's a huge problem. And it's not exactly an orb map in the T side. Uh, it's not really worth forcing it out. It's not like it's going to be the, the difference maker there. It's better just to have five AKs working together with good counter-strike overall and optic. They can steal this game away. It looked like a very one-sided affair. I think we were at 10-2 at one stage in the first half, and it looked like the Optic had nothing to really respond to what North was presenting to them, but Tarek's been amazing. Hayes has been very decent as well. Mixwell, streaky, but he's had some very important rounds with the AWP. They get into this one, number 28, a tactical pause for North, and they will be buying into that. I can give you a spoiler in that respect. I've got the screen in front of me. It's going to be three AKs so far. I think Cajun, just bring that back up, Cajun, B. Uh, he's only at 11 still, but he had a slow first half. Just, I think he's been the best in the second, but it might be Majisk that's actually been leading the way. Yeah, well, they've only had one gun run since the pistol. They got the 3 0. Tarek leads the way overall in frags now after Config being yeah, he's that far ahead in the first half. Absolutely. He's been decent in the first Config so far. Amazing in the first, but almost non existent here in the second. Here we go then. Run number 28. Orb does not come out on the T side. You can see they are limited still. Enough for a buy, sure, but. Don't have all the grenades required for a full execution. He gets smoked out, but only one modus off. A few flashbangs. Nah, he's got the AK. The AK can be so beneficial on the CT side as well. It means you can go more aggressive, go for those one taps, face towards angles like the logs position. And this looks more like something out of the tactic book right now. MSL setting up an early smoke towards library. His teammates will be going straight in, but Rush is boosted up. He gets one. But that's all he'll get. Good trade, but Mixed Balls here on the op. Knows they're coming at quad. Nice pass. There we go. Assertive shot toward Cajun. And they'll wait him behind the pillar config for the smoke to deploy before trying to re-peak. And I think the bomb's going to head elsewhere because they've got no access mix while shutting them down entirely. And 14-14 becomes a possibility. They're a man down, but they are going to rush over toward B and try and isolate Naf in the back of the site. He's playing a very tight angle at Emote because he doesn't want to go down early. He just wants to make sure he gets one frag here. They have the man advantage, right? This one kill is enough to win the round. It means he have a huge percentage chance of winning that situation. 50 seconds remaining. He knows there's a chance coming from City Spawn and Banana as well. And we're still in towards Ruins. Can't forget the bomb at the entrance of the B site. And this, here we go. This is a good entrance point from MSL because he's cleared pretty much everywhere. And now they know the last possible position is exactly here. So they work together. Very well done and good patience from Config to allow MSL to ascertain all of the positions. But now it's going to be bombed down and aggressive from MSL to try and catch them off of the rotation. It gives information to Config, but it's a one versus two. Mixwell tagged on 32 HP. And Config, he'll now get information as well that they're not towards CT. Should recognize the fact that they're going to be at Banana and go aggressive. Oh, they're going to walk right into this. They're not going to check it. They swing out. First killer down. He knows he's just got to play the bomb spot. Hayes crossing, but goes back and hazed. He's got it. He's going to make it 14-14, and North looks stunned. They do. They wanted that so badly. I think they're feeling the pressure right now. Mixwell, great display of the AWP. Like I said, up and down this game, but that was amazing for him. Funnels him back towards B. It was a bit rough enough there. Like I said, he needs to get one kill at that B site. Doesn't get it. it. Comes down to the two on two. CT sticking together though. Both coming from the banana site. And Hayes, the standard, the coach of this team, manages to win a massive 1v1 against Config as well. That's a tall task. And he manages to do it. 14 14. We're all tied up. And another buy for North. Look at their buy map. Five AKs, but in two smokes going into this round. That's almost nothing really. And on a map like Inferno, that can be a huge problem. So let's see what they've got. North now. Oh, this is looking rough for them. They lose this next round. Obviously, it's match point in the best of one Swiss format. This is a real tough loss against Optic. This is... I'm not going to quite go as far to draw the narrative, but it's similar to the Magisk 29 kill round. Yeah. 13-2 Virtus Config. Pro lead. Config this game, it's 10-5, not quite 13-2, but has 20 in the first half and then goes completely quiet and they lose the lead. This is, this is shades of that storyline. Yeah, I would say that's... Very accurate, to be fair, but um, Config now, the hero of the first half, he's been dinked, down to 14 HP. They're relying on the set pieces now, it seems, as well, just saying, right, this is our objective at the start of the round, we're not going for map control, let's try and get the smokes down, and see if we can get a plant and win one of these clutch situations. For now, though, AZ going for a bit of hunting towards Arch. Not going to find too much here, the CT's in this kind of classic 
setup we see from a lot of teams these days towards the bomb site and the outside. In an eight team Swiss format as well, this big it's a big storyline because yeah. it's gonna put North in a very crucial position at the bottom of the table and have Optic in a great standing early on. Naf spraying through from library inside of the smoke. Here's the fact that they're gonna rotate in through Arch and he beats them. Oh, I don't think I'm still spotted. Beats them towards CT. He's in a perfect position. Free kill. Rush has Cajun on the other side and North are flat. They are down two men, and it's going to be map point first for Optic, surely. They don't have any map control. They have pushed Tarek back, but they'll just swap positions. Yeah, he just wants to stay alive. They've got this huge lead. Don't give anything away. So Naf takes over Library instead. From the pit, however, Majisk does get Haze dropping down. His teammate's gone. Rush in the corner with two. Leaves him in a one versus four. Majisk gets the first, but time is done, and it is map point indeed for Optic. What an Kill incredible him. game, and they're going to oh. try to. He's got 10 HP. Oh. He stays alive just barely. Pause comes in. Optic, who would have thought after that first half will be looking down the barrel of match point against Optic with a stand in no less as well. They just can't get anything going on the T side here. Like I said, falling back to the strap book and just running the set piece at the start. That time was a little bit more controlled, but that is losing the initial frags time and time again, buying up with no nades, AKs, and uh, very little utility overall. 15 14 Optic. I was close on the first half. I didn't think they stood a chance. This is an amazing round from Tarek there. He's been a beast in the CT half there, just leading the way for his team. I think he must have dropped a 30 bomb by now. He's still on 28, but still, the rounds he's had have been phenomenal. And we get into it. Round number 30, we have gone the distance here. It's a mishmash by for the final one for North. UMPs, AKs, and two Tech Nines. I say AKs, actually a singular AK-47. Not great. Well, no pressure and a stand-in coach, no less. So he knows the team to some extent. And this is what they've accomplished. Chiefs, you said they're coming into this tournament looking to win games. Well, they've got to look at this as a positive encouragement in that situation. Yeah. Mix well back to Banana. Molotov's down. They go deep and shallow. Anyone running through to try and go fast play would be caught off by them. Thankfully, for the sake of, all, or excuse me, for North, they aren't doing that. It's over toward the apartments instead and likely onto the A site. Rush waits at Graveyard. Is it Rush? No, that's Hazed. I'll get it right eventually. Either way, it's a crossfire set. However, Hazed flashed off, couldn't go early enough, which left Rush in the open. And they've actually got the favor some kills. MSL's pushed through, caught off the rotation. Naf goes down, two more coming from B. They've got to fight on with him as he gets the bomb down. He knows exactly where Optic is coming from. Is this really going to be overtime on this buy? Yep, it is. They're going to work their way back into it. It could be a missed chance for Optic if this goes to overtime. The underdog always has to fear giving away the advantage. Well, they have it. And Mixwell and Tarek are left to try and pull it back. Tarek's going to work toward Boiler, but just shoulder shown, but won't go down immediately. That makes problems for Tarek because they'll continue to push on to him and deal with him accordingly. It's Mixwell now versus four. I would say overtime is a done deal. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing Mixwell can really do here. The bomb's about to go off. Gets a nice Ooh. shot there. Just to send out a message. He's not done in this game quite yet. But North, that's pretty much the first time they've done something quickly towards the apartment side. As I've always said on this map, it's very common these days to send three players towards B at the very start of the round. This time, North are reading those signs and getting towards the apartments. Quick flash out. And I think before Optic were even aware, they're in that pit position, trading frags and finding the UMP kills required. So good job by North to find the final round. That'll be a sigh of relief from them. They've looked pretty poor on this T-side, I have to say. Don't take anything away, anything away from Optic, though. They've actually looked lights out and actually well, got back into this game tremendously. And, well, and that's that's that I, I just hinted to that to that sort of situation for Optic is that there is the underdog. You need to capitalize, and unfortunately for them, they've now thrown a lifeline to North by letting this get into overtime because the situation is very simple. You'd expect them to have a similar sided, excuse me, similar side, and if they can respond on the T side, they're going to look well. This is back to the very start. And what the second half brought us. Now, remember how close that pistol round was? That could have gone Optic's way, and then we might be done already. But it was Hayes unable to close out the last kill on Cajun, and then it slowly did trickle back to Optic, I have to say. Well, yeah, that's a good point. The fact that Optic lost both pistols went down 6 to 0 after those, and managed to bring it to overtime against a team like Northern Inferno with a stand in. A lot of variables there, but you get my point. Um, it's actually been impressive by them to actually get back into this, and here we go then. It will be. MR3, 10k, and Optic will, of course, stay on the city side. We don't swap over at all. So, North now, that's a decent reset. I think that the advantage goes back towards end now. They have a chance to kind of just calm down, work out what the problems were, and say, okay, we look so flat there. We weren't really doing much in terms of the defaults weren't getting at us anything. The faster stuff seems to be working much better. Why don't we just keep doing that and uh, trying to challenge them with the initial duels? We'll see what happens here. Cajun B, 
He has picked up the AWP in the first round here of overtime. It can be quite hmm. a risky investment, especially on the CT side. You don't normally see double orb setups in overtime because it just costs so much money. If you lose that first round, you're left with almost nothing going forward. I'll be interested to see. I'm always certain it makes you all buy it. There it is. He does indeed. But uh, first to 19. 18 18, we do it again. I want to do it again. You want to do it all day. That's actually true. Yep. Nymphomanium. Now, if we'll get in behind the sandbags. And the Molotovs go to the barrels instead to start off the push toward Banana. I'm curious to how they utilize this AWP for Cajun on the T side. We've not seen much of it. He's still sitting back T stairs toward top mid. That's the obvious starting point for it. But where does it go later in the round? B, open it up. A doesn't really offer the same thing except for maybe an angle toward pit, which is a lot tighter right now. He's holding arches, the normal standard. Like outside the library on the very corner itself. Just do, so you've got a full back plan. But uh, we'll see where he decides to go. Occasion for now. T steps. And that flight alone towards the B site. And we'll see whether he takes any damage. There. A few bullets flying his way, but manages to survive. Rush will be falling back to the site as well. Back to that more defensive setup. Crossfires should be established. And Mixwell holding towards Arch. And they are still evaluating Banana. This is where the AWP starts to prod out exactly what's going on toward B. But they got to go back for the bomb, as Chad would say. Or was it you that gets angry when the bomb's left toward T-Stairs? That's Chad. That's, That's Chad. Chad, yeah. yeah. I remember someone yelling, look at it. Oh, that timing. Hayes is going to do well here, though. AZ is going to be popping up. I think he knows and sense that he's gone that direction. So the first kill in the round will go to an aggressive Hayes, who now has all kinds of information and a great read that they're in banana. Shoulder peak costed him. He could have just gone straight up because they're going to push back. And with the flashes out, he gets caught off. That'll open up a lot of possibilities for North as MSL takes down Rush at library as well. And they just have to hold off the rotations. Do you see how devastating that's been? The fact that Hayes gets all that intel, his whole team rotates to the B site. And that's great for him to get that first pick. This round might not be done just yet. I was about to say, North shutting it down, but Conflict's position looks great. Look at the double frag, can't quite get it. And we still have a chance here for Optic. But they have the information from the death of Config. And it's now for 73 left in a one versus two. He has a kit to work with, but no nades. Knows that Cajun was inside of the pit, but where's the second? I highly doubt he's going to suspect Graveyard. Might jump up and just check it for the sake of it. Nope, not going to. MSL is going to be there. Yeah, so the point I was making. So, yeah, Hayes does this amazing job. He spots AZ in the underpass position, casts him out, and then locks him in the B side. He's like, guys, get towards B. They can't leave. I've got them locked in here. And then he's relying too much on his grades. Instead of having his gun out and actually be ready for them to come back and try and fight him, he pulls a flashbang out, gets taken out by Cajun with his pistol, no less. He actually had plenty of time to kill him with the gun out. And then at that point, they're calling, well, Let's just rush towards the A side. That was completely open, and that's going to be a bit of a shocking round overall for Optic after having that huge advantage. All the information, the first kill as well. Hayes did so well, and it all fell apart. Not the best smoke blown there by Naf. There is a gap. That could work in his favor, I guess. And either side, we'll see what happens in that respect. But he gets towards the logs. Conflict looking to challenge him. And you can see Tarek baiting at his teammates. He's in that long position, just trying to say, don't worry about that. There's no one here. It's just me at the top. Shots through from AZ. Tries the cheeky little wall bang through the door back in return. Hayes to having none of it. Smoke down at bottom banana. Naf will position himself to make sure no one can push through it. As a return smoke comes over to Arch, that forces Mixwell back. Bit of damage caught from the nade. MSL tag to 81, but config gets the brunt of the exchange, trying to get back inside of banana, which is still smoked, so he pushed into Naf relatively blind. Well's gonna wait though. Half set with the smokes gone, they're gonna go back toward him. Get the rotation back in from Tarek to be set at coffins as well. Hayes gets AZ, that's the only one over on A. The rest walking toward Naf, who manages only one. Tarek's got the information, he gets to new box. This should be enough time as well for Mixwell to get in position. No smoke down it is now. So he's cut off. It is on to Tarek, truly, but he gets a good shot on a Cajun. Tagged to 12 HP. AWP trying to find the shot in return. Tarek's not going to re-peak. Gets his teammates get in position instead. Cajun still desperate to hunt it out. Dropping down, though, gets Mixwell because Majisk found Tarek. It's given them a real chance, but Hayes is there to take Majisk from Banana. Yeah, nothing really north of you towards the end of that round. Had about eight seconds remaining. They tried to get him towards that B side, but losing the initial exchanges of jewels. Very favorable towards Optic, and they pull another round back here. It's going to be one all. Final round here of the first half of overtime. 
Decent money on either side. You can see if Naf's down to a Famous, he's taken the biggest hit of all. I guess he died in both rounds. But there we go. North back on the AWP. Cajun Beer. Kante has had a huge amount of impact. He's got a couple of frags towards the end there, but it doesn't equate to a round victory. Number three. Naf aggressive with this Famous. You can see that T's waiting for the nades to come into the start there. They want to run through the fire or into the AT grades. It should be a very standard round overall from both sides. Mixwell holding that library position. Back to the set pieces, I think. Should go to the pit. Front side of it. Ooh, there's a mist there. One of those smokes stayed on the roof. I don't know if that was Config's or not, because Config had his crosshair set and moved it to the left again right before he threw it. So let's hope that doesn't... Well, okay, back over to B. It won't cost them. But it does give vision on the fact that the fake is going to be revealed far sooner. Good peek from Naf late. Gets Config down, but Majisk gets the trade immediately. And now MSL Predator waiting as well. They're going to go in behind him. Reads it, turns back, gets two. He let one slip by, but he's ascertained the eight sites open. He's going to pull them back. Do they get hot on their heels? Because Tarek's going to hear them running away down Banana. And if he catches the bomb, he could thwart oh. the whole play. Gets Cajun B. Bomb goes down. 46 seconds is lots of time. But Tarek now has a chance to make the fight work. That's actually great. He actually slowed them down tremendously there. And Tarek looking for a bit more. Misses out slightly there. So they have got control of the A side. Majus will plan. But still, a two on two. Tarek doing some great work there to make this a realistic situation for them. So bomb planted. And this for the lead of the first half of overtime. Tarek will start hunting around and clearing out arch side. They don't go all the way around it, though, and that will not reveal where MSL's playing from. He's come back toward the library to open up his angle, and Majisk stays on the stairs. Just barely, they get that bomb back over toward A, and now it's their position to hold. Majisk gets one spot. The other bull shot comes through from Majisk. Was that through the hay bales and the wall? He's on the defuse. They've got this. What an incredible play. Does he have it? I'm not sure. Oh, Ooh. MSL gets there in time. That's about as oh. close as you like. That was very close indeed. MSL with three kills in total. This was the key play. He actually, like you said, watches a player walk past A, snuck in towards the arch, listening for the rotation, nails both of them as well. But Mixwell with a shot through the gray belt as well. I thought that was enough for the full defuse there. And the smoke down on top of the bomb comes down to one second. MSL saves the day. Great round from him. And North have the advantage, at least for now, as we get into the second half. 17-16, like I said, it's first to 19. One round for North to get match points. We'll see whether they can do it. And draw no parallels between overtime and regulation. But it was a T or excuse me, a CT sided game with a T sided overtime. Yeah. Which could spell disaster for Optic. Certainly puts pressure on them. Well, uh, just to we've discussed the, the variables all day long, but the fact is playing with standing against North and Inferno, they've and lost both pistols. They've done a very good job to even stay in this game, take it to overtime. I've been impressed with them overall. Always been a, a team with lots of firepower available to them. Up and down since uh, the E-League victory, but still. It's a good point, today. yeah. Yeah, one, one of the biggest events last year. That's a nice net. Towards the logs, they saw me sort of snuck in there. Took him down. So they have five and four, just like that. Fast play towards the middle, though. Tarek does spot one player in the apartments. And they're going for an outside wrap very quickly indeed. AZ waiting to see if they'll push any further, but look at Config up close. Downed in the end, and it's Cajun to hold off. This will be map point for North. If they get there, as I said, for Optic, it's giving them a lifeline, letting this get to overtime. And North do succeed to find the first map point. Yes, they do. Quite a clean round overall from North, who is Optic going for the very fast play that, like I said, Getting apartments control, that was Tarek, gets towards Boiler, flash through, and it's going for the outside wrap there at that point, and it's going to be North hitting every single shot. If you remember how dominant Config was in that first half of the AWP, he's not, he's not even hit a 30 bomb, considering he was on the, what, 24-4? 20, yeah, 20 and 4 in the first yeah, half. Yeah, and now he's had little to no impact Ooh. since then, but Mage is with the orb this time, strangely enough. Double orb set up, MSL looking to clean up, maybe Frag they don't have to get, but still, Config on the other side of the map takes down Hayes, so instead of 4 and 4. And thankfully Config does, because I think Majisk missed a shot that he easily should have picked up. Yeah. So again, they leave Cajun not Ooh. on the AWP on the CT side, so they're electing to go with Majisk and Config instead of just Config. Yeah, that's even. really strange, isn't it? Yeah. I and guess Mage's boy plays the B side, a similar situation what FaZe do with Nico. This yep. is the one on that side of the map, and... Uh, See what you can do. Well, with that said, they do manage to get another kill from Config. So two from his AWP. So that one's working at least. But just because rotated back inside of the site with AZ to support him from CT. And it looks as though he wants to go Coffins to get information on entry. Which could then mean Majisk knows how to act. Go for the peaks or not. First flash in. AZ set to flash back. He may have to do so sooner rather than later. Does it now. They're not 
all the way around the corner, though, so Mixed Ball blinded, but can't get in position with his op. No further rotations. It's just the two inside of B site. Smoke off and Majisk found. So that AWP not finding kills early when it had the chance, maybe a problem. AZ gets a bit of information, spots Rush on the edge of the smoke. It gives them the man advantage on the retake. This for the game as well, as Naf's gonna plant safe side Orange's one. Config can't find him with the shot into the smoke, but the slow peek from Mixwell works against Daisy. I'm surprised that does. I thought surely he would get the spray down. Yeah, 13 HP as well. The retake begins. One player in ruins, one a banana. It's Config with the AWP and Cajun with the AK-47. Waiting until they can strike together. I've got a couple of flashbangs. Let's see if it works out for them. Cajun getting closer and closer. AK in hand. Naf swings out, though. And Optic's going to stay alive, at least for another. In the post-plant situation, again, that double op, I think it haunted them. I really think two misses from Majisk was at least one too many. He needed yeah. to get something at the banana side. Not known to be an AWPer. He's actually one of the best rifles we have in the game, and the fact is he should be sticking on that. It's a very similar situation. Like I reference Nico in phase as well. It's what we talk about all day long That's when he's true. using it, right? At Star Series, somehow they made it work, but there was a few rounds where you and I in the finals were sitting there going, ah, come on, give it up. Yeah, it's just like, it's, if you, unless you have a really good orb who's confident in that sort of position, let's get into this round. It's getting quite exciting. Mixed well to take down Mages there. And it's another 5 on 4 MSL up against. And now, Ooh. poor Flashbang might get something out of this. I think he's just to fall back at this point. Seeing as he's at 51 HP as well, boosts himself up to the site. And he has to call him for help from Config as well. But that's exactly what Optic wants to do. They found the initial pick. Yes, damage has been inflicted to the terrorist side, but still. They have the advantage here and then some more as we get into this. One minute 20, Config trying to get the aggressive angle. And you did say 18-18, we do it all again. That is a likely possibility. Oof. That, okay, all right, fair enough. I was going to say that's risky to fire into that to bait out a shot because he was actually looking through the wall where a player was. But it's nonetheless the op shot in favor of Optic to make it a five versus three. Cajun alone on the A side. Take that back, hang on. He still got AZ near library, so it's actually going to be a solo hold on B, which is extremely difficult for MSL. Naf will lead it as well. Flash out. MSL playing from emo. Will limit himself early, but he actually gets Naf on the way through. That's not bomb, but it is at least a kill. He's going to stay there alone for now. He's hoping, or at least his team is hoping, that that kill is going to funnel them back toward A. And Tarek may confirm that thought to them, but it's not accurate. They're going into B now. It's MSL that has to shut them down. Not known as an opera either. Just like Majisk, but he manages two. Bomb's going to go in position. Now Tarek doesn't need to take this fight. Smartly realizes they're there, and he'll rotate around to support his team. Yeah, that's perfect from Tarek. He's delayed them from rotating and actually managed to stay alive as well. They have the advantage. Looking to take it a double overtime here. It's a three on two. Hazed from Ruins with Cajun getting ever closer. Could stifle the entire retake early, and he will. Done. It's Tarek that gets both of them on his late rotation, and it's now going to be double overtime for Optic. Another good recovery from them. Absolutely. Considering that T-Side was pretty poor in the first half, to be fair, they managed to pull it back, and Tarek, he's been very good at being on the other side of the map. It's uh, kind of that classic Lurk role on Inferno, especially from what we've seen so far. He's always in the boiler room at the end of apartments, where his teammates are set up, ready towards the B site. He's coming in, at least finding one frag, and it's being a nuisance, and staying alive as well. That's the key point. If he goes down as one frag, doesn't mean too much, but if he gets one frag, stays alive, and suggests he could be still backstabbing them, they have to have their wits about them. It's going to slow them down even further. So that's fantastic there from Optic to take us to double overtime. Everything reset once again as we get back into it. We'll have a look at the buy. I don't want to see that double orb set up on the CT side once more. Like you said, Major Spoil, not known to be an orper. Didn't hit a single shot there. MSL did what he could. He finds two kills, but it's not enough. And here we go. Three towards B once again. Major Spoil with the incendiary. It's going to be conflict with the orb, of course. Back towards middle, I believe. And MSL using the incendiary to buy him a bit more vision to see if he can find the T's at the bottom there. Not going to be the case. Bomb down a T steps. One of those slow defaults coming in from Optic. On fake, but wait. Well and truly above on top of the half wall. But no real aggression toward Banana early on from Optic. MSL will push. I think he's expecting a gap in the smoke. There's really not. He's playing close to it nonetheless. Config found by Mixwell is a good start from Optic again on the T side. Yeah, Config's dropped off recently. Mixwell coming to life as well. He was the streaky player at the start of the game, but now 
Four and four. We'll get into this in full beast that execution. May just always have to push through with the flashbang as well. Can he find a frag? He's going to have Grey's Green himself. Can't get a single kill. And now it's up to MSL. Smoked out as well. He's had to be the hero on this side so many times. Can he step up in this situation? MSL. Oh, hang on. Because they're going to push in front of him. Doesn't get either. He does kill his teammates. So we'll call it a trade. But that could have been so much more for North. Either way, two versus two as they still approach the site. Cajun's going to have to go in through ruins. Flames down at CT, actually. They're gone, so he can reconsider. They'll go together. They can play for the trades. Crossfire set, though. Hayes peeking early. He's low enough that that nade should take him down. It doesn't. It bounces too far. Hayes survives with 8 HP, and that buys time because AZ has to go wider just to find that. Taps out bomb. He's expecting Mixwell to push the smoke. He hasn't yet. Now will. Is there enough for the defuse? Oh. Doesn't even matter as Mixwell nails it with the AWP. They just can't get anything going here at all, North. They've had a rough couple of rounds here, and AZ... To be fair, he'd been baited out so much by Mixwell that he turned out to perfection. I think even if AZ gets that kill, he can't defuse a bomb. It was so far gone at that point. Um, but still, Mixwell hitting a really impressive shot there, pushing through the smoke. And it's going to be the first round for Optic. We'll get into this one now. No war for the north side here. I think that's actually been a bit of a problem. Config was lights out in regulation in the first on the CT side. Been pretty quiet, being outdoors on Mixwell, left, right, and center. And Majors this time. A fast play from Hayes finds the first frag. These have been. Very quick rounds, I have to say. The initial frags coming in in the first 10 seconds or so. We'll get into this now. 5 on 4 in favor of North this time. And Rush looking for the kill on apartments. Baiting his teammate Tarek, who's getting to the end. This will be a fast play from them. They might as well go all in. No presence anywhere else. Cajun B's been spotted. And who wins the duel? Wow. Okay, Tarek. Knew he was there, and yet... Pulls an A down. Yeah, a bit audacious to think that he wouldn't repeat that. So it's caught for it. And Cajun... Holding true gets Mixwell as well. Easy smoked off. He really wants back in the fight. He doesn't even really necessarily need to because Config... It's back around a debt naff, and we go 19-19. 22-22, the magic number this time, Hank. Yeah, this is an all-out brawl now. You can see Optic. This is very similar scenes to what we saw for North in the regulation to actually get them towards overtime there. The, the slow stuff wasn't working out. We know that three players go towards the B side to start. Let's just go fast to Palmer. That's the first pick. Let's just get out there as fast as we can. KGB got a little bit lucky there. Spots Tarek. Tarek pulls his nade out for some reason. I don't know why he would do that. Obviously hoping that Reface doesn't come in. He gets taken down. KGB gets two kills in total. And here we are. It's going to be round number three. And Mixwell, after buying the AWPs, of course, he's down to the Tech 9. Four AKs around him, though. Still anyone's round. MSL, no nades whatsoever towards the B side of the map, but he is pushing down towards the Logs position. Can be very advantageous for the CT. He's going to be smoked in as well. His teammate, Major Boy, boosted up on the wall. So, nice little setup on the B side of the map, but that's not where Optic are going for now. They're actually focusing once again towards the apartments, with Cajun B waiting for them on the other side. He's getting waiting, getting rather getting closer as he waits. To getting out boiler, can't config spraying into the smoke. Bit early, but wants to try and do damage where he can. Could shuffle them over toward Con Cajun as well, but config's gonna get smoked off. Has to rotate to library. Bit late in doing so, or are they gonna go back toward quad? It appears they will. We saw AZ play this position early in the game to great success. Let's see if we can replicate that now. After regulation that goes all CT sided. Really gonna get another half going to the T's in May because they've got double trays on the way through and Tarek's gonna add to that unanswered to make it a 3-2 post plant. Fast rotations over MSL, bomb denied. Bravo. And they're already setting for the round to be to be in a post plant, excuse me, as Tarek rushes well down but apartments and Majiska's hurt him. That's a huge problem. He was expecting to be playing the post plant at that point in time. Naf now has to clutch this back with 40 HP and a one versus two safe plant. They're gonna know he's on the site. Shoulder peak, I don't think they just spotted the first. Does that time and that brings MSL into it. Very well done from North. And a bit of a misplay from Optic. Optic had that round completely locked down, but they're not really thinking when they're getting the bomb. They're putting time to work with that. If you haven't got caught covered, plant safe within sight. You can still cover that from the pit position. The fact he's just doing that default plant, completely exposed. I don't think the CT players can believe that luck when that comes in. The bomb goes down, the round falls apart, and Optic will be kicking themselves after that one. That was a real nice play for them in terms of the build up to the round and the final trade play towards the bomb site. Perfect. Just a misplay on the final plant. I didn't see who it was, but they needed to be a little bit more aware of the situation. Just a safe plant would have won the round at that point, I think. But here we go. North do have the lead once again. We'll get straight back into this round number four of the second overtime. It's going to be an AWP. Occasion B on the T side to kick things off. So, a double AWP. We haven't seen many double AWPs at all really on the CT side. Just that one from North, which is a bit of a disaster. 
Um, you see a lot of teams like FaZe and G2, for example, they really defined how good the double orc can be on Inferno, but now it seems like a lot of teams know how to shut it down and how to exploit the vulnerabilities of that setup. One HP already for Cage. Yeah, what's just happened there? AZ's been wrecked. Where were they? They just got nades. <laughs> Look at the damage. <laughs> it's just nades and Molotovs, and they've walked through the <laughs> a slaughter from Optic. We're looking at 2020 vision, and hindsight's not too clear because that's still pretty remarkable that that much damage came in early. Majisk in a one versus five at a minute and 25 to go. Um, yeah, that's uh, a bit of a strange one. That much damage should not be coming in at the start. The nades are very powerful on Inferno towards Banana and Middle as well, but I've never seen that much damage or that many kills that have been this quickly on Inferno in a full gun round. That was good from Optic. I like that a lot. Majisk now in a five on one. Not a single point of damage inflicted towards the CD side. Not really much you can do here. Even a couple of kills won't really dent the economy unless he finds the, the AWPer somehow. Maybe two more. That'd be relevant, but not really much more than that. We just downed. So okay, all then. five stay alive. Not that it matters as we're in overtime. Economy not the biggest deal, but still. Confidence nonetheless. That's pretty incredible. Don't do that again, North. Let, let's try maybe sending one or two alt mid. Yeah. Well, so I'll, I'll go to the same position. It, it's just, it's just, and then you're over time, you're trying to throw a spanner in the works, something the CTs won't expect. And ah, okay. I saw Tech 9 for Kant. K I didn't see the gun down. There he's been dropped the orb. So, I think that'll be back to business as usual for North. Let's stop rushing now and running into the grenades. We'll just see if we can get a pick here at the start and then going to the default 2020. We have been reset once again at round number five. I have double overtime here. Single all for Mix. Well, have a look at his position as well. Top and middle for now. Not looking down to find a frag. Just so to smoke so he can focus on that boiler room position. That's actually a very nice angle. We've seen wall banks here as well. Yep. Was, we forget again. Dupree. Uh, was it Dupree? Did it? Against. Uh, it must be Device, right? Draken. Draken. That's right. Device against Draken. Yeah. That's right. We, we figured this out last time. Yeah. And we've got it again, Henry. We're good at this. Yeah, we'll get that. It's like we're paid to do this. One day we will be. That's the dream. Then mommy and daddy will be proud of me. One minute remaining and bomb down in T-steps. It's very common from Optic. Or North, I should say. Optic were doing it as well. That doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> Does not work either way. But uh, North will let the bomb in T-steps this time. And Naf will be left alone on the B side. Oh. And what a great oh. shot that was. But gets instantly replied by Cajun. Eagle EP from Cajun gets the bomb back, thankfully, as well. Smokes out the oh AZ. Is that going to be a huge problem though? Is that miss going to cost them? And Hayes is able to shoulder bait further. He's down to 11 bullets. He's got to get the kill now. Manages it. And he's still screened off, so they can't respond, which means that Misel can walk in. But Tarek from the graveyard finds two. A jump from AZ. We'll get him back. And this will be 21 from North. If Mixwell can't do anything of it, AWP again for him on the retake. Has a kit. Doesn't even matter. Cajun's aggressive and stays forward. He'll make it the point that they need. Match point once again for North. They've been in this position so many times in this game, looking to close it out. Previous round, AZ getting out of those power machines and the smoke to his advantage as well. Whiffs the first shot, but managed to make up for it. Tarek almost shut it down there. Great play from that great position, but ultimately only got two frags. And match point once again, you can hear that. Yep, so second straight overtime North said, map point. Yep. Well then, Nath and Tarek towards B this time. MSM Convict waiting to see if any more aggression comes in from that side of the map. Injuries are down. Smoke comes in. I suggest they have a bit of time to work with it. That Molotov to push off the Orper on the corner. They almost locks Tarek in. So this could be interesting when a flashbang comes through. They still have time for Smoke. That's what I was thinking, because Tarek could have easily backed off of that, but he stayed out with Nav. You leave no man behind, I guess. Yes, all for one and one for all. Yeah. Three Musketeers. Exactly. What are we? We're like the eight Musketeers, the talent crew. Is it right? I, I was hoping I was right with that one. I was, I was hoping you'd correct me. I Let me no count idea. there. Yeah, there is. Okay. Uh, there's nine. At Miles. Sorry, Miles. We're almost there. Almost. It was a good try. Uh, there's ten if you include your OJ. But I think we'd leave him <laughs> behind. So. Shot from MSL. Decent trades go both ways. Majisk has rush. This could be it for North. But Majisk has to be careful. Takes a bit of damage from the flames. And for the bomb towards that shield. B-side. And Naf's realized that could be a possibility there by himself. They haven't committed just yet. Naf lied. No nades. 
M4 has to rely on pure firepower here to hold them off. But he's got an inkling as he calls Herrick in as well. This is going to come down to it. Now, does he take the face? Smoke towards CD Spawn, which is by himself. He needs to find at least one frag here. Tarek's going to push the smoke. He's going to hope that Nap pulls the retention, and it works. Tarek goes in, and we've got triple overtime. Why not? No one can close this game out. It seems North with a second bite of the cherry there to try and close things out. Can't do it. Tarek and Nafly stepping up tremendously. Like we said, no nades actually hold off the B execution there. And it's not going to work out for them. We do it all over again. Everything's been reset at this point. And it's going to be 10k MR3 once more. We did not switch sides. Rush will be buying up first. And nothing really will change. It'll be more the same. One AWP on either side. Cajun B with the AWP himself. And like we said, the AWP hasn't exactly been super impactful on the T side. Yeah, I'd prefer just the five AKs and stick as a tight pack and try and get the frags going, but they want to make this work and we'll see if it works out for them going forward here. Third set of overtime. Who would have thought? In Optic, game one. Yeah, Optic coming over stand-in, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with North on their best maps there. It's actually very impressive so far from them. And it highlights, I think, what the desk was saying about North's inconsistencies. Are they really world-class still? I think this tournament is one where they've got to prove themselves. Tough start thus far. They'll start off on the T side. And this the third overtime, 21-21. Boost up for Nav. We did see them try and use the Molotov to thwart that position last time with a deep smoke, but it didn't work with the timing, as you mentioned, Henry. Rush with a good start, though, is going to put a smoke out. It's Cajun over toward B that has an equalizer, which means Nav has to drop early. I think the flash went this time, not the Molotov. But speaking of flashes, it's Naf that gets brought back in from CT. Even with Tarek down, he manages two quick kills. It's on to AZ in a one versus three. Yeah, quite desperate effects coming in from North at this point. There's one player thrown into the A side, trying to get anything going he can. He gets one kill, but it's so well read from Optic there. Shutting it down, one flashbang finds a couple of kills, and you can see how disjointed the North side is. The bomb was actually still down. They didn't have anything to go with as going to the site there. AZ now in a 3v1 that looks almost impossible. He's got time to work with. 30 seconds on the board, but three kills to find in the bomb to plant. Doesn't look possible. Nafly can be the sacrifice at this point. He's get the information. He's playing behind that fountain. Ah, he nails a shot as well. Nafly's actually been very, very good in the last few rounds. The three for him in total. And opt to take the lead once more. 1-0 here in the third set of overtime. And the T side's now looking a bit quiet for North. They're trying to change the pace every time. Right? They've tried the fast plays towards A and they got naded. Completely wrecked. And that was quite lackluster, I have to say. One flash completely shut down the north side as they make their final execution towards the B side. And north now getting rid of the AWP. Like I said, it's had real little impact. I don't really think it's been working out for them at all. And Config has he even found the 30 bomb yet. Okay, he's had a few frags, but he was 20 and 4 on the CT side in the first half. And that wall bang damage, that's lovely. Oh, and they're going to get it. They do get it. And Majisk is there to capitalize as well. Yeah, he's got that from second mid. So when Majisk slips out and he's spotted now toward library where Mixwell is. They're gonna make this. Are they gonna back off and save with this AWP early? This is gonna be our first overtime save. I think it is. Yeah, it's impossible to win the round. Might as well save the orb. That was kind of cool. If we can see that from Maze's POV production, that'd be great. I'm not sure if that's possible, but um, he actually got the wall bang from second middle, dinked him at the start of the round, and then finished off the kill as well. It's so rare to see that actually come in for a kill, and AZ manages to get it as his teammates are going in towards the apartments as well. That was uh, pretty beautiful. So five players survive for North, and they tie things up at one-one here. So. Good work overall. We're interested to see where you line that up, whether that's from the bridge position or actually, I'm not sure what you call it. You go past the bridge, that little balcony area? Yeah, well, that's what I used to refer to as Mona Lisa. Not yeah. that there was ever Mona Lisa there, but there was paintings and a little right. balcony. And I just don't know why, but that's what I called it. In source don't right. ask me for logic, Henry. In I'll show you. In source, right? These I'll, sh I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> These pieces always shed in this position, right? And yep. had, a, had a petrol can in it. If you shot it, it did 10 damage to you. Really? Yeah. That was a thing? There you go. That's right. that I didn't know the petrol can actually. Yeah, okay. So it was a bit of both, to be fair. That's pretty cool, though. Good work. Oh, oh did we just... He's dropped it. What it is that? the last of the first half. There was in the GevBot. <laughs> but Majest dropped it. I assume it's banned in ESL tournaments. Yes, it so. still is. It's banned in Pro League, so you would assume then yeah. that IEM and ESL would be together on that. Yeah, he, I mean, it's the last round I had the first half, the third overtime. If we want to be technical, he's, he's put it back down and spawn. Well, here we go. Round number three. Uh, OT number three. Up and down so far, but a nice round there from AZ to find that wall bang and a lifeline for North. A single offset once again for Mixwell. He's actually on the A side of the oh, map and Conflict takes a lot of damage there as he falls back towards T steps with the bomb down to 48 HP. 
Let's just do fight another day here. But we have got full B control now from Napline. So he's been very good in that position. He's actually doing that on a lot of maps these days. Holding inside on train, for example, and now holding banana. I think the issue with Config's playstyle is that he's so aggressive and assertive that when it works, it looks beautiful. But when it gets cut off, it's a disaster. And as of late, he's been having problems right there. If he went down over toward B with Bomb that early, could have been a huge problem for his team. They managed to pull it back, though. Cajun in the opening kill. And Config, the one to follow it up. Tarek, element of surprise, is able to get MSL back at least. But look at the B site. Race on. And thankfully... No one has a Honda engine, or they'd break down before they get there. Both teams arrive at the same time. Tarek takes K K excuse me, Config immediately. He's going to sit the edge of the smoke. He may go for more. He's got a lineup. He nearly gets four, but he gets a third, and Majisk gets the response. It leaves Majisk in a one versus two. Mixwell with a bit of a gap in the smoke will confirm he's crossed into the site. No need to overcommit. Let his team make it up, banana first. He just spoiled two on one, 10 seconds. No bomb planted just yet. He needs to think about what he's doing. He won't be able to have, actually be able to plant at this stage. He, he can't win this round. He has to find a kill right now. No, it's not going to happen. That's a bit rough for him, trying to find something towards that ruin area, but didn't work out for him. I think that's Tarek's 43rd frag. So he's been pretty sick in overtime so far. Yeah, that's ridiculously good. And with that, we look for 25 to be our winning number this time, Henry. 24-24, we do it again. Okay, which will probably happen. Because it seems like it's not that point <laughs> on the T side that these teams just don't really have much left in the tank in terms of tactical prowess. Like they're just doing the defaults and getting shut down at the start. I've seen the CT aggression is working for both sides time and time again. It's now North. It's their chance to have a go. We'll get into it. Round number four. All for config this time. It was quiet in overtime so far. It wasn't as good as he was in regulation time, but we'll see where we can get going here. Two players towards the B site and another default for Optic overall. Rush waiting towards the underpass. Seeing if anyone decides to face him at the start. Not that be the case though. And we can see the CT pushing down once again. MSL loves doing this. Using those incendiaries at the start to push the CT's door to terrorist back. And then grenades towards T-steps as well, but only very little damage inflicted so far. Cajun B. No warp on the CT side. It'll be Convig. And he's at the top of the middle. MSL in toward the tree will wait. That's a decent position to have as well, deep in banana. Especially this early with fives up. I'm starting to like this little wall bang game over toward the apartments that we're getting. They've made their way to the terrorist side out from boiler. Cajun's got a smoke to his left and therefore can look down through a gap at that doorway, but no one peeking just yet. Config that's waiting at Arch. Mixwell starts it. Config spots but can't land. Oh, goes back though and does get haze. That's bomb thrown. They'll smoke it off. But if there's a rotation around toward Moto, thankfully they Molotov. That bomb could have been covered. It's going to be Cajun down by Mixwell. Aggressive on the entry point. And you said they were running out of tactical prowess, but the kill's certainly not. However, bomb still not oh. planted. As Config gets responded, it's AZ above. Bomb thrown forward again. 31 seconds. One player left. It's Tarek. And AZ's going to try and do damage back onto him before the rotation arrives. As Tarek is very limited, thankfully AZ realizes it. Drops down and he won't take the fight. Even with the Molotov going in, but just gets the shot. Amazing work there from AZ. He's so good on that A side. Just ducking and weaving behind the pillars and the boxes. Finding damage, staying alive, allowing his teammate to come in just in time as well. Tarek knew exactly where he was. Couldn't find the angle, throws the Molotov, but it's too late. Major's boy comes in and strikes towards the end there. Another fast round by Optic, and North shut it down. It's round number five here. 23-23. We are completely tied up once more. Config on the Orb this time. And Mixwell, he's been great so far. He's actually been hitting absolutely everything in since we've hit overtime, but... Can't find the final few shots there. Config not so aggressive towards middle, just watching towards second. Another default here. It's kind of like Groundhog Day at this point, Matt. Just the same round over and over again. <laughs> that movie's fantastic, Henry. I love that film. It's one of my favorites. Is it? Yep. Bill Murray is such a god. We're, we're, I think today we're finally discovering films you've watched. I've been, it's I've taken been, us I've been, two and a half been, years. I've been up in my game recently. I've been actually like going through the IMDb top 100 films of all time. I, that's, I did that one year. I got to about 25 before. Unfortunately, I just ran out of time. But yeah it's, yeah, it's a good thing to do, actually. There's some good ones on there, obviously. Obviously. Shawshank number one. I've seen that. I've done that. Config. Let's get back into this, Matt. Well, we can touch on that in a podcast, maybe. <laughs> we'll do a film podcast. Config with the first shot. He's at Bernardo this time and manages to take down the Orpa. Mixed well at the bottom. 
Oh, middle. So this is a great start, but Tarek fighting back. He's been so good with that AK-47. Looking for more frags, but it's made this boy. Could get a double here. Low HP on Tarek. Can't really cross yet. Has to smoke it out. And he'll be using the flashbang instead. Easy. Can't find a kill from Graveyard. Optic yet to have a map point in overtime. Look like that's going to continue to be the case. They forced out overtime both times otherwise. Quite clearly, but the HP low. Tarek walking in. Bomb down already. He's got to regrab that and try and go for a plant with many North players nearby. And he... Interestingly enough, looked like he was lining up the headshot on that, but was late to the draw. North again will be Go. in the position to capitalize. Another chance to close this one out. We'll see whether they can do it here. 24-23. Optic with one round to take us. Would it be quad overtime at this point? We're in triple? That'd be quad, yep. It this says, says overtime OT2, two at the top, but confusing. that's actually incorrect. Yeah. So this is OT3. On? On but uh, you're right. And it looks like North could do it. Look at the money for Optic. Two AKs, a Galil, two Tech 9. Surely... This would be the time to close it out. You've got everything in your favor, all the nades, the weaponry. Keep this in mind, North yeah. forced the overtime with That's a right. similar weaponry. The, the first play. overtime, yep. Yeah, it is CS go. CS go fast with pistols is what that actually means. Well, this is the same play that uh, North did to take us to overtime. They're going for it as well. Tech Nine's out of the apartment. Smoke towards library. Let's see if it works out. They have got Incendiary waiting for them. AZ for decent nade as well. Final play coming from Optic any second now. I think it's a bit early. Doesn't do much damage. They're getting further information, though, because there's noise made inside of the halls. And AZ is unsure of where exactly to position himself to watch off the quad side as well. Smoke down on the door, that may be signal for Optic to start to rotate back around and evaluate elsewhere on the map. They've lost map control. This is a bad play for them. They have no idea that MSL has gotten this tight corner. He's baited in by Magus as well. I don't like this at all. If you lose this sort of presence on the map, going back towards B is such a risk. And I think they know that. They're still flirting with the idea of pushing Ooh, into it. This could be a problem, though. If they bait off that, there's no bait. MSL misses the shot. Then they go. Trade works. They'll get an M4 from that. It's over. Yeah, unfortunately, Magiskin Config shut that down elsewhere, didn't they? I think they had to commit to that apartment's play. Once they lost B control, that was it for me. So Rush will go. It's a Hail Mary, a desperate play. Hazed gets up, but cut off from Ruins. He'll go down bomb as well. Rush the last one alive. And despite doing well, very well, without winning a pistol, the force out these overtimes, they may have missed a chance with their first and only map point. Because North survive, although I have to say for North, this is not the start of the tournament they would have been looking for. Yeah, a slightly hollow victory there, I have to say, from what we saw in the first half. Config especially looking amazing. It looked like they're running away with that game, but still they managed to do it. It took three sets of overtime, could have gone either way, but it's against Optic with a stand-in. So I have to say, you expect them to be winning this game. They did that, but Optic showing as they are turning up in this tournament. Absolutely, and, and showing up. I mean, again, a bit of an issue with North able to close out config, slowing down, incredible, but Optic are looking at least threatening, I have to say. But that said, it's still going to be North going on. Remember, Swiss format, they go into the 1 0 category. Optic down below. We'll find out who they play shortly. We've got a long day of Counter Strike ahead of us. We'll be back.